All right. Testing, testing. One, two, three. Mic checks. That should be fine. Hopefully. Hopefully. That's not even a fucking word. God damn it. Hopefully. The audio is fine. I feel like every time I start streams, I feel like there's like something stuck in my throat. I don't know why. I don't know why, because I'm not, I'm not like a nervous type of person. It's just like, I'm perpetually in a state of dying, apparently. So, Phoenix Wright, justice for all. We're back with more of it. <coughs> Gotta clear my throat. I have a guide on standby if need be. Because I believe we are entering... Uh, what the hell? Part 4? Part 4 2 trial. What the hell are they talking about? Oh, episode 3. Alright, never mind. I was looking at it and I was like, what do you mean part 4? We just started part 4. So we are entering... Chapter 4, which I believe is called... Oh, it's right there. I wasn't even looking at it. It's called Farewell My Turnabout. I love... I love the phrase turnabout. It, it's like... It's a, um... I don't know, for some reason, it gives me the feeling of, like... Someone just lashing back at something, you know what I mean? Like, watch out for that turnabout. You know? I like it. It's such a good phrasing of words. Anyways... <clears throat> I'm stalling. Episode 4, Farewell My Turnabout. Part 1 Investigation. Load the selected data? Yes, I shall. Now, the moment you've all been waiting for. Who will be this year's Grand Prix Champion? Who will our Hero of Hero? Wait, who will be our Hero of Heroes? What the hell? Will it be the last year's runner? Or maybe Captain Sim- Wait, Simpan? Saipan? <laughs> I see the students of the certain star- Okay, it's going too fast. I'm not even gonna try no more. I give up. Look at that man. That man is a- uh... <laughs> That dude is wearing a Speedo. The winner of the third annual Hero of Heroes Grand Prix... Is me! What? Oh my god, it's Sephiroth. He's in Phoenix right too. Oh no! The true hero of the night has appeared. It literally is Sephiroth, just with a spear. <laughs> it looks like this year's Grand Prix goes to this fantastic warrior. The Nickel Samurai! Look at that cool-ass arm he has. Clockwork arm, I like it. Too bad Jammin' Ninja looks like titles eluded. Oh, uh, damn it. March 2nd. 7.42 p.m. Gatewater Hotel, Viol Viola Hall. Hmm. Alright, yeah! Did you hear that, Nick? Did you hear? The Nickel Samurai, he did it! Yeah, he sure did. I'm getting too old for this shit. Ah, I'm proud of the guy for doing the series justice. Oh my god, it's... It's... What's his name? Hammer Power... Mr. Hammer Powers? Jack Hammer? Is that his name? Jack Powers, <laughs> but you know it's the it's the Silver Samurai. <clears throat> Some Phoenix, right? Damn right. Um, so the person everyone was cheering for, I guess he got the prize. Yep. You know who we're talking about, right, Pearly? The Nickel Samurai. No, every Sunday I only watch the educational channels, Kids Masterpiece Theater. Okay, that's it. From now on, it's the Nickel Samurai. All the kids watch it. All the cool kids, Pearl, you hear me? You must do, it's, oh, Will Powers, that's what he is. Then who was the other guy? His name was, wasn't there a dude named like Jack Hammer or something like that? Was that the, was that the culprit? <laughs> it's been a while. Do you like the Nickel Samurai too, Mr. Nick? Nah, Nick's an old bitch, so he's not allowed to watch it anymore. That's right, but I do like Kids Masterpiece Theater, it's great. Hey, I didn't know you were so young at heart, Nick. Mr. Nick, you're a grown-up. You're not allowed to watch it anymore. You're supposed to act your age and have interest in that match. It's very important. Aw, oh, give it a rest, Pearly. Looks like I made the right choice in inviting everyone here. 
The dude that died was Jackhammer. Oh, okay. <laughs> Willpower. <laughs> the dude that died. I'm remembering the dead guy. But I definitely remember Will Powers. I like him. He's cool. You know? He has that, he has that like, uh, what was it? Like that Viking feel, you know? Hefty, hearty, all that shit. I'm glad y'all having a good time. Uh, and it's like a dream. Too bad for Jammin' Ninja, though. Last year, he lost the Pink Princess Warrior of little old Tokyo. I thought this might be his year. He looks like Wolverine. He deadass dude. Well, Wolverine if he was tall. <laughs> yeah, if he was like six foot. Oh, hey. Did anyone else think that Jammin' Ninja looked a bit different today? Different? What do you mean? Um, well, he wasn't carrying his bright red guitar. Hey, you're right. Strange he walk around without his signature guitar. <sighs> I'll never understand these people and their shows. Me too. Me too, Phoenix. I'll never understand people in, in fucking Game of Thrones. <laughs> Tall Ginger Wolverine. Ginger? D ginger. <laughs> do, do you need... You, know, you need a color blindness test? He's a dirty blonde. <laughs> He's not Ginger. He's dirty blonde. Basically, Ginger. You know what a Ginger looks like, man? <laughs> He's a dirty blonde! He's not ginger. I'm not crazy. You're crazy. Anyways, Mr. Powers, thank you very much for tonight. Aw, oh, it's nothing. Oh, you won, so it's just my way of saying thanks. Hey, Nick, come on. It's time to get on to the lo Come get to the lobby. <laughs> he said... <laughs> he said, fuck, ignore me. Never mind. If you squint, I swear... <laughs> If you squint, I swear the color changes from dirty blonde to red. There's a post ceremony stage show that's supposed to start real soon. And then I heard there's going to be a press conference after that. A press conference? Is he going to make a speech about winning this year's prize? Uh, well, not exactly. <laughs> something about the Nickel Samurai confessing something. Confessing? Sounds pretty serious. Ah, uh, Nick, come on! You don't want us to be the last ones there, do you? Yeah, Mr. Nick. Do you? My voice just cracked. Jesus. I'm a fucking grown man. <laughs> why Why me? The show doesn't even start for another 20 minutes. Oh, we're getting into... ...to talking. Thank you very much for inviting us today. Aw, uh, it was nothing, really. Guys like us don't get to come to a place like this often, so I thought I'd to invite you all. Hey, Mr. Powers. What have you been up to lately? Well, since the Pink Princess successfully wrapped up last month, I've... Wait, so the show's only been going for a year? Damn. <laughs> They're done with the Pink Princess? I've been on the kids' exercise show. While wearing a rabbit mask over my face. Uh, do I do I sense some Five Nights at Freddy's hostility here? <laughs> Years before Five Nights was even a thing? Oh, I see. I'm still really sorry about all the headache I caused you that time, Mr. Wright. Oh, it's no problem. I liked it. It was a fun trial. Oh, well. What's done is done, so let's forget about it. This is Will Powers. He's an action star. His popularity exploded when he was the Steel Samurai. And he was the first case Maya worked on with me. Good times. First time I find out that she's a little thief, too. It's too bad you look scary or people know that, know you're real softy who goes, who's good with kids. Top three favorite cases in the series? Really? Really? Okay. Really? That's a big one! <laughs> hmm, thanks. I can't believe you're gonna make a movie based on the Nickel Samurai. I can't believe it either, but for a different reason. The Steel Samurai, an epic story of one hero in a desperate fight against his arch nemesis, the evil magistrate, in the city of Neo Old Tokyo. Not to hype it up, just saying. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, it, no lie, it, it's kind of hard to, um, uh, I don't come off as it, but it's hard to hype me up for things, because I'm very cynical when it comes to things. For example, Cyberpunk is out. I knew that game was going to be glitchy as hell, so I didn't buy it. And last year, they started a new series, The Nickel Samurai. The new series seemed to be a hit with the kids, too. I'm really attached to The Steel Samurai as a show. 
so I was hoping that maybe I'd get a chance to do something in the new one. Yeah, it's too bad. It's been awesome to see you with a new actor, Matt Ing Matt Ingrade? Ingrade? Ingard? Ungard? Matt Ungard. Ingard. Avant Guard. I'm gonna have a hard time pronouncing that. He's super popular right now. Mr. Ungard? Looks like Pearls doesn't know who he is. This year, it's gonna be the Nickel Samurai versus the Jammin' Ninja at the box office. And then they're both gonna be like, wait a minute, your mom's name is Martha? Oh shit, let's not fight. Hey, you see that ugly dude over there? Let's mess him up instead. <laughs> Jammin' Ninja? Who's that again? Huh. So who's this Jammin' Ninja again? He's a hero, duh. His symbol is the bright red guitar he's always carrying. A ninja who always carries around a bright red guitar? How does that even work? I don't know, about the same as fucking a ninja in an orange and blue jumpsuit. Orange, blue, and white jumpsuit. <laughs> By the way, am I crazy or does he just have, is, is he a Strider reference? Is he supposed to be a reference to Strider? He's looking pretty Strider right now. With a scarf around his neck and a guitar in hands, he raises to stardom in, an an in the ancient times. A ninja who becomes a star? Yeah, a ninja who becomes a star. <laughs> Not sure. I mean, he looks he looks a lot like Strider right now. That's all I'm saying. It's the colors. He's a ninja. Strider has a bright red scarf. He has like this bright red guitar. You know? There's strong there's strong rivalry between the two of them. Global Studios, Nickel Samurai, and World Worldwide Studios Jam and Ninja. They even air at the same time. You know what I heard? I heard those two don't get along, just like Vin Diesel and The Rock. The Nickel Samurai, un Nickel Samurai's on guard, and the guy who plays the Jammin Ninja. I mean, Nickel Samurai speaks French. Oh, you mean Matt on guard, the actor, the actor. I guess even the world of heroes isn't as sparkly is in a sparkly happy place. Yeah, that sucks. Let's head out to the hallway. Man, I should have showed him my fucking badge. Damn it. Look at this beautiful hallway. Look at that teddy bear. I love that teddy bear over there. Wow. What's with this place? Looks like I stumbled into the Oz or something. Way in the back, there's a sign for the bathroom. Maybe I should visit while I can before the show starts. There's gonna be a dead body in there. Every time I have to check the bathrooms at my job. <laughs> Every time... It's like, make sure you check in there, make sure there's no hobos, like, camping out over there. And it's like, one of these days, I'm just gonna open it and find a dead body, because someone else did. <laughs> someone else at my job just said, said, yeah, there's a dead body in the bathroom. I was like, oh, shit. Sounds like the post-ceremony show is about to start. All right. I'm so pumped. I wonder if he's gonna show off his special moves today. Nickel Samurai smelting. Just casually a dead body. Oh man, that's not the first time I stumbled onto dead body. I, I have bad luck. I was actually, I was a witness once. Actually, what I'm in, let's not talk about that. Actually, what I'm interested in most is the press conference. You mean the big press conference the Nickel Samurai is going to make after the show? What? Yeah. Apparently, um, I don't want to get too into it, but, but, uh, <laughs> casually were a witness to death. Oh, trust me, it wasn't casual. It's, uh, you know, you live in the ghetto, and then, you know, people just get shot and killed in front of your house. And it's like, who's that? Oh, that guy's just a friend of a friend. And it's like, oh. It was a lot of things. A lot of things went, went crazy. <laughs> it's dangerous out here. My day will soon come. So what is it? Don't you know what it's about, Mr. Powers? Uh, well... I'm not the Steel Samurai anymore, so I don't have any idea. Ah, Sorry. Ah, oh, so I guess you're all gonna just... Guess you're... Uh, I can't speak. Sounds fun. Oh, man, it was. And so... <laughs> that's so fucked up to say. And so I guess you're all gonna uh, go into the press conference then. Yeah, of course. If that's the case, then here. Take these tickets so you can get in. Ticket number 16. Seems like the Nickel Samurai is to confess something after the post-ceremony show, like he's a murderer. He's like, I killed somebody. Thank you very much. Well, let's get going to the lobby. 
looks like it's over this way, Mr. Nick. I hope Pearl just stays for this case. Because last case, she was there in the beginning, and then she just disappeared. She just went home for the rest of the time. Okay, for great justice. Nothing else to talk about? Now that we're here. Check it. Ah, uh, I really owe you one. If it wasn't for you guys, I don't know what would have happened. What you did, it was a real tight... What? I was in a real tight spot. Wait, what? It was a real tight spot I was in. Fuck. <laughs> I fucked that up like two times. And who fought so hard to get me out? I don't care what happens. I'll never forget everything you've done for me. Alright. Time to head to the lobby. Hey, Breezy. How's it going? Just taking it easy, Breezy. Hmm. Only a real gaudy hotel would have such a large gaudy lobby to match. Uh, I think they're gonna have the post-ceremony show over there. They're using a compact stage? I see. Oh, I'm all ready to use my special samurai powers. Maybe, oh, so, um, one thing I wanted to talk about real quick, it's nothing too important, it's something that I found really interesting. You know how they talked about that in, in Phoenix, right, that sometimes the police would use mediums to, like, help them, like, communicate with the dead in cases? Apparently that was a real thing in the 90s. In the 90s the eight, and the 80s. And then, you know, they would really actually go to psychics. People believed that shit. Police would go there and fucking be like, Hey, psychics, tell me if this person's dead or not. Are they missing? Of course, you know, psychics are kind of frauds. Your attention, please. Your attention, please. The Nickel Samurai post-ceremony stage show will not be held tonight due to the unforeseen circumstances. The Nickel Samurai is dead. What? Why? Ow, you didn't have to pinch me. Pinch yourself if you don't believe it. We are asking for everyone's cooperation at this time. So please stay where you are. This is a special request from the police. Ah, oh, shit. The police? Did they just say the police? Didn't know that? <laughs> God, they don't do that anymore? Yeah, fucking, um... Ah, what, what's the name? There was like a... There was like a big time psychic. She's dead now. But she's just like a total fraud. I think her name was like Stephanie Brown or some shit. I don't remember. And I was like, wait a minute. They really used to have her on investigations and shit. And people believed her. It's like she just made shit up. <laughs> Do you want me to go and check out what's going on? Um, wait, I'll come with you. Freeze! You two, didn't you hear the announcement just now? It just finished telling you not to move. That voice. I heard that voice somewhere before. Honestly, youth these days can't be bothered to listen to other people when they're t when they talk. Just the other day, it was oh god, is he blabbering? I can't, I can't keep up with him. Oh man, to the bridge. What? I what? What the hell? Is he talking about like fighting some dude? He talking about fighting a kid? <laughs> this nonstop chatter. Is that the- uh, no. Is that windbags? It can't be. Miss Oldbag? Oldbag, my bad. Windbag. Wendy Oldbag, that was her name, right? What is it, young whippersnappers? <laughs> you young whippersnappers, do I know you? Wait, you. Your powers, aren't you? Yeah. Um, about what happened back then? You didn't even get nominated this year, did you? Oh, that's right. You're doing that children exercise program, trying to play nice. Yeah, that's me. Thankfully, I still have a job. I love that show. And you're a hoot. You're the big brother character, right? Yes, even with your face cover- Oh, God. Oh, I can't. No. Stop it, please. <laughs> Just stop talking. Um, what are you doing here? Look at my uniform and tell me you can't tell I'm a member of security. What? But that outfit. Annoying. No annoying noisy brats get the blasted. rat a tat 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 <laughs> What? rat a tat a tat Oh my god. That's hilarious. Alright. So we have fucking, uh... What's his name? Why can't I remember the guy's name from Spider-Man? 
For some reason, I want to say metamorpho, but it's not metamorpho. <laughs> Somebody help me. Starts with an M. Mysterio. That's his name. Got it. Miss Old Bags. What are you doing here? What happened to your position at Global Studios? Oh, that old place? Well, since that incident, they've been letting people go. When they cut the security team, I got the pink slip. What incident? What'd you do? I didn't do anything, you youngins. Don't you remember that incident a year ago? When this lady got on the witness stand and testified. Yeah? And you, weren't you the one who was bullying me? This fragile girl at heart? Um, I plead the fifth. But you know, I think maybe I rubbed- I rub- what? <laughs> I rubbed the upper management the wrong way by testifying. Yes, that has to be it. Everything's your fault. Me? I thought about being a bodyguard at first, after being handed the old pinky. The old pinky. <laughs> Metamorpho. <laughs> yeah, I know it's not Metamorpho. I got it. It's Mysterio. Metamorpho's the thing, though. You know, Metamorpho's the, uh... He's like the purple-skinned guy. He has, like... He can, you know, he can metamorph into shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> He's a big dude. You a bodyguard. Is his name Metamorpho, or is it just Morpho? I'm pretty sure it's Metamorpho. For your friend, that fiery good-looking guy with the red jacket and the ruffles. Oh, what? Mr. Edgeworth? Don't say his name, Maya. But... That sort of, arran that sort of arrangement would be entirely too troublesome for me. That's what he said to me. What did I ever do to deserve that? rat a tat 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 <laughs> I love that. I love that gun so much. She said I got a ray gun. <laughs> so, did something happen? Oh, Morpho and his evil double Metamorpho. Okay. Alright, I knew I wasn't crazy. I don't have all the details. But it looks like another, another one of those incidents happened again. An incident? Like a murder kind of incident? Maybe. You see, I'm a bit of a devilish woman. Oh, you don't say. So, wherever I go, sh showers, of <laughs> showers of blood are sure to flow. Bet you didn't know that. I don't... I don't like that she said that sentence to me. I think she's too old to get that time in a month. Um, shouldn't you quit being a security guard, at least for other people's sake? Silence. <laughs> rat -a -tat 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 -tat. <laughs> hey, Nick. What is it? I don't like that devilish smile play playing on your lips. For some reason, I read that, and... <laughs> I read that, and I'm like, that, that sounds like a line that comes out of a fucking... Like a fanfic. I don't like the devilish smile that's playing on your lips. <laughs> like, what? Well, okay. Let's make let's make like we're going we're going to the bathroom and check things out. No way. The police told us not to go anywhere, remember? Oh, how boring. You're such a boring guy. You got no motivation, no spirit. Oh, uh, what? What's going on? Are you giving Mystic Maya trouble again, Mr. Nick? Not you too, Pearls. Please don't stick your little nose into this one. So listen to this, Pearly. This one time a lawyer camp, Nick. Okay, I got it. Damn. Let's go. I know you couldn't say no to me, Nick. That's right. You walk over miles of hot coal for Mystic Maya, what is you, Mr. Nick? What is this? What is this fanfic shit that's going on right now? Stop it! <laughs> that would be every time we work on a case together. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go already. You can come along too, Pearly. Goody! I get to come. I don't... I don't like that I said that. <laughs> that, that, mm, that rubbed me the wrong way. Let's just pretend it didn't happen. There's nothing really out of this ordinary here. Are you looking for the incident that the old lady was talking about? Doesn't look like it happened here. Well, we better go look somewhere else. Alright then, let's try... Excuse me. Is this the- No. No. Okay. I thought it was the guy from the hotel in the first game. You know, and- mm, Oh, excuse me. Are you by chance Miss, uh, Miss Maya Faye? Um, yeah? That me? 
So, uh, what's uh, Two Face's deal here? Literally, he has the white streak in his hair and everything. <laughs> you have a phone call waiting for you at the front desk. A call? I wonder if something with Kirin Village. What's wrong, Mystic Maya? Oh, nothing. You guys go on ahead. I'll be right there. Okay. Right this way, Miss Faye. Do you just always carry a turkey with you? <laughs> Let's go look somewhere else now, Mr. Nick. Yeah, okay. This is a little exciting and a little scary. Why are you looking at me like that, Pearl? Stop it. Gatewater Hotel, March 20th. I told you. I get people the info they want, which means that I, I've got, wait, I got a right to know. Nope, don't care who you are, pal. Re oh, shit. Gumshoe's talking to somebody. We're still investigating, so you can't go in. What's your problem? Just you wait. It'll be all over in the morning paper. Scruffy detective secret scandal revealed. You'll see. I'll... Is that... Is that... No. That's not Lada. That's not Lada. Is that Lada? Those two sound pretty serious. The southern accent can only mean, mm. Hey, right! She's back. I love her. Never changed, Lotta. Come on, do a gal a favor and tell the cop I'm just doing my job. I've got the rights. Ah, oh, you. <laughs> Detective Gumshoe. Hey, pal. Help a guy out. Tell her the only, <laughs> the only police are out here. This is the scene of a murder, so she'll, she would have to leave this to the pros. A, a murder? Ace Attorney Reunion. Exactly. This is... Mm. I don't know how to feel about that. I got a big smile on my face. Ah, oh, shoot. Me and my big mouth. All we need is Larry now. I haven't seen Larry at all this game. Where the fuck is this man? See? I knew it. My gut instinct told me so. I always trust my gut. A murder... A murder, it said. And that's what it is. A genuine murder. Hey. Wait. Yeehaw, a, mur a big star, no let what? Oh man, I'm in trouble now. Yeehaw. <laughs> Was that a lot of going yeehaw? <laughs> what? She yeehaws now? So, Detective Gumshoe, a murder. Ah, uh, no, that's not it. I got my facts mixed up for the second there, pal. Um, Mr. Nick? Is the dead person Nickel Samurai? Uh, why'd you ask? Well, Mystic Maya was rooting for him, so. It wasn't the Nickel Samurai that got bumped. Actually, the Nickel Samurai is is one under suspicion of doing the bumping off. What? The guy that died was this hero named the Jammin' Ninja, pal. The Jammin' Ninja. Um, that woman with the big puffy hair that looks like cotton candy. You mean Lada? That woman, she was there that time too, right? That time. When Mystic Maya did the channeling. Oh, that time. Well, Lana's a journalist, so that's why she was there. Journalist? Looks like she was hanging around here before the murder happened. Hanging around? Yeah. Hiding and waiting in front. <laughs> hiding and waiting in front of the Jammin' Ninja's door, pal. But well, why would she? She wouldn't tell me, pal. Just said something about getting my big scoop. Scoop? What sort of news could she be after? So the victim was the Jammin' Ninja? Mr. Jammin' Ninja. He was on a real popular rival TV show, The Nickel Samurai. Oh, to the Nickel... Uh, to the Nickel Samurai, I can't speak. Oh. The victim was the action star Juan Cordia. Cordia? Cordia? Juan. <laughs> he got a huge push and rode the express train to stardom. I mean, even I know who he is. Yeah, even I recognize his face. But I heard lately that Matt and Guard's been- Oh, look at this fucking- Look at this! What, what was Chip Skylark's rival? What was his name? Tommy Shiny Pants or some shit? I don't know. Skip Shiny Pants? Look at this motherfucker. <laughs> this guy- This guy's a Chad. That's a Chad. He looks at himself in a car fucking- In one of the car mirrors, you know what I mean? The rear view mirror. But I heard lately that Matt and Guard's been taking the wind out of his sails. 
I'm telling you, pal, as far as who's popular, those two are hogging all the limelight. I guess there's no space for Mr. Powers at all, huh? Poor guy. Mr. On Guard? Hmm. That's the Nickel Samurai, right? Yep. I mean, no. You gotta say it with more oomph, the Nickel Samurai. Anyways, so now that now that Juan Cordia is gone, that means Mr. On Guard has the whole stage to himself, wouldn't you say? I wouldn't bet on it, pal. We can't have that happen, you know? Can't have that happen? What's that supposed to mean, I wonder? Well, you should let me in, pal. Oh, never mind. He's not gonna let me do that. 100% Chad. And this isn't even my final form. Oh. Okay. Well. Huh. Check this out. These eyes of mine are real pros now. Pros? Pros are doing what? Doing police work, of course. My eyes are like a hawk. My professional eyes spot a messy incident. A messy, bloody incident. That's why I don't have time for you meddling kids and your petty little things. Calling me petty? How dare you? How dare you? I guess I'll head back to the hallway. Shit. Oh, Nickel Samurai? Gossip photo of Maya pushed onto me? Really? Would you take a look at this for me? Listen, pal. I'm not leaking any info about the evidence to you this time. If I do, my salary's really gonna get it. What salary? You're basically working for free! And then I... <laughs> I'm working for free! I feel like I'm working for free. I feel like I'm always broke. And then I won't even be able to get this instant noodles down to the... D wow. Oh my god. I'm so sorry. Yeah, he's not gonna say anything. Damn. No one's hiding anything? Nope. I mean, it will automatically go off. Check the attorney's badge. Nope. Oh. Shit. Alright, well. Oh, examine. I forgot I can do that. There's a toilet in each in each room in this hotel. But all sorts of events are held here. There are bathrooms for people who aren't staying here as well. Perfect for people like me who can't afford to stay here in the first place. Shit. Alright. Is everyone just broke in this fucking it besides Edgeworth? Damn. I can understand flowers in front of the dressing room. What are the stuff bears doing here? Could it be that there's an action star with a soft spot for teddy bears? Nah, it can't be. Alright. I highly doubt examining things would help. The economy is horrible. Everyone's super broke here. The hell would I examine it here besides this delicious looking chicken? It's a feast fit for a king! Yeah. It was the first time I ate that food. What was it called again? I think it started with key? Kiwi? That's right, a kiwi. I don't know what to say. It's a sweet but sour fruit all in one. Poor pearls, haven't eaten only vegetables all her life. She's... Oh, I forgot about that. Damn. Oh, man. You're missing out, pearls. For the chandelier. So, that's called the chandelier, right? No, it's called the Chandelure. It's a ghost and fire type Pokemon. It's a little different in color, though. What is that for? What does it do? Well, it's for lighting up the room, Pearls. Um, uh, Mr. Nick, can I look down now? My neck hurts. What the hell am I supposed to be doing here? Nope, none of that. I guess I just examined shit then, right? Let's head back to the... Oh shit, I didn't mean to do that. Let's head back to the uh, hallway. Pearls is adorable. She is. I love Pearls so much. It's hard to not like Pearls. Alright, what's going on here? There's a piece of paper taped to the door. It says Juan. Juan Cordea. His name is just sounds like a star's name. I've heard it before, but I don't know anything about him at all. There's a piece of paper taped to the door that says Matt on guard's room. Matt on guard. I've heard that name before. Oh yeah, Maya's always yammering ab about him like she's a such fan of. To Mr. On guard from the Global Studio staff. Ah, uh, it'd be nice if a lawyer got flowers too, something like. To Mr. Wright for all your grateful clients. Oh man. Is there really nothing to talk to him? Did I not? Did I not? Did I not talk to, um, 
What's her name? Did I not talk to old bags? I did. The hell is going on here? Examine. This is the stage for the post-ceremony stage show. There was supposed to be a press meeting after the show, but now... It looks like they will... Huh. I had to yawn for a moment. It looks like no one will hear what the Nickel Samurai has to confess after all. Hmm. Seats for spectators of the post-ceremony show and the press conference. It was too bad that the events is going to be held now. A lobby with a grand staircase almost feels enormous. But right now, the only thing filled this enormous room is anxiety about the murder. I really hope nothing else bad happens here. Where the hell? These cameras must belong to the press that came to cover the conference. They're all basically doing the same thing, staring at the empty stage. Hmm. I guess that's... What the hell's wrong with you? you all furious for? There's a grand set of doors over there. It's the doors Maya f uh, followed the bellboy out of. The award, uh, the award ceremony was just held on this stage. It was really fabulous. You just remind me of the circus for a second. I wonder if everybody's alright. I heard that Barry Big Circus just recently started holding performances again. I'm sure they're all fine, Burles. They sure is one luxurious hotel, almost to the point of gaudy with how it blends together everything fancy imaginable. Speaking of fancy, didn't that bellboy give me something like that last year? What? In the what? <laughs> Did I read that right? Didn't that bellboy give me something like that last year? The fuck are you on about, Nick? The lobster looks like people. <laughs> You're right. It's a little red rocket peeking out. Oh my god. Stop it. Oh, what the hell? They haven't cleaned up all the food yet. There's a sad feeling hanging in the air now that the party's over. Just take some of the food, stuff it in your pocket. Nobody will notice. It's like that, uh, it's like that Twitter account gripping food with force. Oh my god, that, that makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> Is there nothing I can do with you? Oh, shit, I forgot. My bad. Hadoi, you can fucking talk about people. Well, let's talk about, uh, Nickel Samurai. He really took the Grand Prix tonight. Why well, is a big fan of his. Really? Oh, I'm sorry then. Why are you sorry? Max on guard was just arrested, pal. On the suspicion of murdering Juan Cordea. Or Cordia. Am I saying that right? Is it supposed to be Cor Cordea? Cordia? What? <laughs> what about Juan? I'm not a real fan of his action shows or anything. But I know who Juan Cordea and Matt on guard are. You can't talk about one without talking about the other. They even debuted around the same time. So they have this real fiery rivalry, rivalry with each other. Kind of like you and me, pal. I never knew he thought of me as a rival. Really? I thought we were just kind of like frenemies. What about Lada? That girl is number three on my peoples I've seen a lot of lately list. Oh. Oh, then who's number one? Let me guess, it's fucking Von Karma. As if you need to talk, it's you, pal. Really? Huh. So who's number two? Maya Faye. But it looks like she's not around this time. Must be nice to have such good friends with each- uh, must be nice- Fuck! <laughs> it must be nice to be such good friends with each other, isn't it, Mr. Nick? Somehow I don't think that's the real meaning of Detective Gumshoe's list. Corita? Corita? Is that her? What? Really? Corita? Huh. I don't know. Let's see, what about, uh... What do you really... I don't, I don't think he'll know anything about these guys. Yeah. Which means you're kind of forgetful, aren't you, Mr. Detective? That's not what I... That's not what it means exactly. <laughs> What'd he say? You mean a lot of people... You mean a lot of people as detectives. So I make extra sure not to forget people just... Okay. 
Now, having said that, I don't remember ever seeing this person before. <laughs> okay, that's what he said. What about yourself? I look good. I think I've lost some weight, pal. It's only wishful thinking. Wishful thinking, huh? In that case, I wishfully think I've lost some weight. I wishfully think he might face the facts one day. Lately, I've been on the instant noodle only diet. Oh God, <laughs> I feel so bad for you. <laughs> you in come on, Phoenix. Why did you inst you instantly shot down his happiness? You said I'm not sure about that, pal. <laughs> I never even thought Gumshoe as fat. I always thought of him as just like, you know, like, kind of like, like muscular fat. You know what I mean? Like he's a big dude. Poor Gumshoe. My man makes no money. Let's talk about... Oh, really? I assume she would know these people. Huh. Really? And what about yourself? Huh. He seems buff or built to me. Yeah, exactly. I thought he was kind of built, you know? Like, he can tackle the shit out of somebody. I never thought of him as, like, fat. He doesn't look fat to me. I, I'm wondering... <laughs> I'm wondering when he'll, when he'll take that bandage off his face, though. Scar's been healing for a long time. I was really shocked by what happened to her in that one case. I didn't know she had such an awesome power. Awesome power? I thought maybe I should do some self-improvement and take up a hobby. So I went out and bought some morning glory seeds and planted them. Oh, that's nice. That's a good way to improve yourself. Ho ho ho. Merry Christmas. <laughs> well, it's nothing really. What about Pearl? Do you know this person? No, I don't. She's standing right in front of you! <laughs> what the hell? Oh, man. So I, ta I talked to him about everybody. About everything that I can talk to him about. What about, um... Huh. I'll head back to old bags, then. He's still got that chiseled jaw. He's beautiful. That's a beautiful jaw. That's a strong jaw. What about Maya? No. No. Nothing. What if I... Did I do this already? Yeah, I did. What the hell? Am I... What am I missing? <laughs> what is going on here? I'm trapped. Oh. Okay, it unlocked the arrest. My bad. Should have checked it earlier. Why was Mr. Unguard arrested? Sorry, pal. But that's not something I can tell you. We just started the investigation, so we don't want any leaks. Like the Capcom leak. <laughs> Looks like that yet another Steel Samurai hero is in hot water. Um, uh, Mr. Nick, if Mystic Maya knew about this... Yeah, I know. She make me take the case, I know. Okay, well, I, I guess that's, that's it. With him. There we go. Oh, finally getting somewhere. <laughs> Hey, so what's going on, Mr. Wright? Looks like Juan Cordia, Cordia, Cordia has been killed. What? Juan? He's... But he was the Juan. He was the chosen Juan. <laughs> that was a shitty joke, but I liked it. It looks like he was murdered, and I suspect it was a... Uh, and his suspect was rest. The suspect is Mr. Matt on guard. You're joking, right? Nope, they arrested the Nickel Samurai on suspicion of murdering the Jammin' Ninja. Oh, not again. I feel sick. Again? About a year ago, something just like this happened, Pearls. It's the, you know, she's like, what is she, eight, nine? She's been around a lot of murder. <laughs> I still can't believe, I still can't believe. No way. No way Matt would. Mr. Powers got his, what has Mr. Powers got in his hand? Oh, before I forget, this? This is for you, Mr. Wright. I got this from the bellboy that came by earlier. Radio transceiver. Originally from the bellboy, it can transmit and receive signals over great distances. For me? But why? I don't know. All he said was it was for Mr. Phoenix Wright, the attorney. Huh. 
It was almost right after you guys left. An old man who's who's a bellboy. Fuck. My lips are getting dry. <laughs> Damn it. We make the quiet guy talk for extended periods of time. An old man who who's a bellboy at this hotel showed up. And that's when he told you to give this to me? Yep. Why why give this why give him this transceiver? Huh. Matt is the most energetic and active actor out there right now. The Nickel Samurai really sealed his place as a pop star idol, pop star, pop idol, but he kept adding fuel to the fire of his rivalry with Juan anyways. Mr. Juan, he's the Jammin' Ninja, right? Those two would butt heads over anything they could think of. But I say the eh. But I say that Matt was the only one who almost came who always came out on top. I guess some people only know how to relate to others by butting heads like a ram. Oh, you're the one to talk, fucking Mr. Right? You fucking, all you do is complain and fight with Gumshoe and Edgeworth and everybody. Juan said that he'd take Matt on, on this time too. He just joined a rival TV show. Wait, what? Juan said that he'll take Matt on this time too. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> and that was the Jammin' Ninja? Stylish Nickel Samurai and the Burning Jammin' Ninja. Well, things turned messy real fast with those two using their shows for their war. And the final tally? Look around. It's pretty obvious how things ended up. Matt even won the Grand Prix this year. The final win over his rival, I guess. Mr. Angara was going to hold a press conference, wasn't he? That's what I heard. Though, if he wanted to get technical about it, it was the Nickel Samurai's press conference. Nickel Samurai's? Yeah, he was supposed to wear his costume and give the press conference that way. He was going to be in costume, but why? I'm not sure. They don't keep me in the loop anymore. Hmm, I was just wondering. Where's Mystic Maya? She's been gone a long time. Now that you mention it, Maya's, Maya was only go going to answer a phone call. Maybe she got lost? I'll take a quick look around for her. I don't think it's a good idea to have you go off by yourself, Pearl. Oh, uh, what, what is it, Mr. Nick? I'm not sure. It's coming from the transceiver. Hello, Mushy Mushy, right here. Is this Mr. Phoenix Wright, the attorney? And you are? You don't need to know who I am. I think you have other things to be concern concerning yourself with, such as... Help, Nick! Mystic Maya! Maya? So, Mr. Wright... Wouldn't you agree that th that the more important issue is the fate of the girl? Her fate? Does he mean what I think he means? Maya, where are you? You hurt? Come now. Don't fall apart on me. Yet. This. No, it can't be. No. Now that I have your attention, Mr. Attorney, I have a modest proposal for you. If you do what I require, then I will return you your valuable item unharmed. Item? Fuck you, she's not an item. What is this called again, in your fancy lawyer terms? Kidnapping for ransom? Yes, that's it. This is a kidnapping. Mystic Maya! Jesus. My sight, everything faded away. Maya, Maya's been kidnapped? Are you there, Mr. Attorney? Are you there? How much, how much you want? Very good, Mr. Attorney. I'm glad you have such a good grasp of the situation. Hurry up and state your condition, and then return to Maya. Money is not what I seek. What? What I want is a certain verdict. I would like for the complete acquittal. Complete acquittal? What in the world have you done? What in the world? Eh. What in the world have you done to need? I'm not the person you will be representing. What? You are currently at the Gateway Hotel, are you not? And I know that the murder has just taken place there. Juan Cordilla was killed, and the suspect is Matt on guard. You are, as expected, quite on top of things, Mr. Attorney. Now then, what I want is very simple. I want you to obtain a complete acquittal for Matt on guard. Matt on guard? But why? He did not kill anyone. I can attest to that, however. However? However what? However, someone is framing him for the murder. A very smart someone who is setting him up to take the fall. If I agree and do what he wants, can I believe he'll keep his end of the bargain? 
you are of course a liberty at liberty to take me Ugh, can't read <laughs> you're of course at liberty to take me at my word or not however there's one thing you can take as fact right now your very precious item is with me in my possession oh come on Maya, no you have two days of course tonight he will be in questioning with the police but the trial is in two days at that trial you will win a not guilty verdict remember you only have one chance one chance mr attorney one you expect me to to get it you expect me to get a not guilty in one trial yes exactly i don't believe i was wrong in choosing you so don't let me down oh yes that's right now that i'm playing the role of the kidnapper i can't pass out this chance to say and don't even think about calling the cops. Hmm, not great, but you get the idea. Damn it. Who? Who the hell are you? Very well, I'll tell you that much. My name is Miles Edgeworth. D Killer. D Killer. <laughs> what the hell? My name is D Killer. Mr. Nick, where's Mystic Maya? She's been kidnapped. No, it's all my fault. If only I had gone with Mystic Maya. It's not your fault, Pearls. But it is! Mystic Maya! Mr. Wright, I think... I think we... I think we should tell the police what's going on. I think we shouldn't! No, we can't do that. If we do, who knows what will happen to Maya. Mr. Nick, what about the detective we saw earlier? Detective Gumshoe? Yes, that's it. Wait here, I'll be right back. All right, I'll take care of the pearls while you're at it. <laughs> Hello, Spambot. <laughs> Shh, not so loud. Ransom is complete acquittal for Matt on guard. Wait, the deal is complete acquittal in exchange for Maya? You mean... Then it means Matt on guard is obviously the killer, pal. No doubt about it. But the guy said that Mr. on guard's innocent. You really gonna believe the kidnapper? I guess he has a point. If on guard really is innocent, then why is then why is the kidnapping? And on top of everything else, there's all this evidence we keep finding, huh? The forensic team's having a field day back there, huh? But it's strange. There's so much evidence that it feels like something's wrong. There's too much evidence. Is that possible? Actually, didn't the kidnapper say something about on guards being set up? Anyways, looks like you won't be leaving here tonight, pal. Just sit tight and cooperate with the investigation. Tomorrow you can start yours. Alright. Isn't there any other way? You've also got to be careful about pushing the kidnapper the wrong way. You're right. Damn it. Date? Who knows? Time? Who knows? Location? Where? No one cares. Ow. My head. She's in a wine cellar? <laughs> Where am I? I wonder if I'm still in that hotel. What happened to me? Nick, Pearly. Come on, you guys. This isn't funny anymore. I see you have awoken. What? Who are you? Me? I am known as the killer. The killer? You mean like as in an assassin? I'm too young to die. Don't worry. You are not my target. For now, anyways. Oh, shit. Nick? Nick, where are you? Help me. Yes, that's right. Only one person can save you now, and that is Mr. Phoenix Wright. Huh? What? Nick's going to save me? Calm down and be a good girl. Think of this as a business transaction. That is... Mm, that is creepy. <laughs> Don't say that. A business transaction. I'm going to contact him now. I hope you'll cooperate and play your assigned role well. Nick. What's gonna happen to me? Nick. Early. Sis. Is this Mr. Phoenix Wright? The attorney? You don't need to know who I am. I think you have other things to be concerning yourself with. Such as... March 21st, 8-11 a.m., 
right in Cole Law Office. Good morning! Ah, oh, morning, Pearls. Mr. Nick, Mr. Nick, come on. Let's hurry and go see Mr. Engard. We have to wait a bit, Pearls. Visiting hours don't start till 9. Oh, I see. Um, uh, Mystic Maya. If only, if only I'd gone with you. Poor Pearls. She's been like this since last night. We managed to get home somehow yesterday evening. Thanks to Detective Gumshoe gently holding her by the hand and leaning her here. But by the looks of it, I don't think Pearls got any sleep at all last night. Mr. Nick. Mystic Maya. She's alright, right? Yeah, she's alright. Either way, I'm gonna save her. You can trust me on that. Please, please help her. I'm only able to stay this calm and collected because Pearls is doing the crying for both of us. Aw, oh, damn it. Edgeworth has to be behind this, there's no doubt. <laughs> I, I just have a feeling only he would do something so elaborate. Alright. Let's see. Um, I have a thought. Huh? You're gonna represent Mr. On Guard, aren't you? Yeah. I don't really seem to have a choice. Hmm. But what if... What if he... is the real murderer? You know what, Pearl? For the longest time, I've been thinking... You think Edgeworth kidnapped Maya? Of course I do! That man's being shady. <laughs> I have been thinking for a while, at some point, there's going to be... We can't have all these fucking cases and our, our defense can't be innocent every single time. At some point, at some point, the defense is going to be the guilty. I, it has to happen. What would you do then, Mr. Nick? Would you fight to get not guilty for a murderer to save Mystic Maya? Pearls? Let's talk to Mr. On Guard first, okay? We can think about all the bad things we want, but it doesn't change a thing. Yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. I can't stop thinking about it. Me neither. Pearls? You're really worried about Maya, aren't you? I don't have anyone else left in this world. What do you mean? My family's all gone. Her family? My father? He left my mother in the village behind and went away. I'm sorry. And my mother. She did that thing all for me. Mystic Maya, she's like a sister to me. She's all I have left in this world. Aw, I feel bad for you. You have me, Pearls? I could be your big brother. We couldn't wait for visiting hours to start, so Pearls and I just came down here early to visit one nickel samurai charged with the murder of Jam and Ninja. Good, good morning. Are you... How are you today? I know this situation might be a little tough for you. Um, where... Oh, sorry, dude. Huh? I already signed up. Excuse me? Wait, wait a minute. You didn't... You son of a bitch. You didn't fucking... Did you... Did you... Did you say you were guilty? I already have life insurance. I signed up a long time ago because my job... Oh, God. Oh, don't give me a heart attack. Oh. You son of a bitch. Oh, no, no, no. We're not life insurance salespeople. Really? Dude, I really don't... I really don't need that right now, either. Huh? Fire extinguishers, I mean. This building isn't my house, so... No, no, no. We're not here to sell you fire extinguishers, either. I'm a lawyer. My name's Phoenix Wright. A lawyer? What the fuck? Hold on a sec, bro. I'm gonna ask my manager, okay? The Nickel Samurai sure's a strange person, isn't he? <laughs> life insurance. He does need some life insurance right now. I think strange is an understatement. Sorry about that. You're just in time. Huh? You're a lawyer, dude, right? My manager's looking for a good one right now, so how about it? Mr. Nick, this is our chance. I have to make him let me, let me take this case. I have to. Sorry to intrude, but I would like to ask you a few personal questions. Um, that's okay. 
but dude, my autobiography is coming out in like a month. If I say stuff without the publisher's approval, then I'm gonna be in real shit. Hold on a sec. I'm gonna ask my publisher, okay? Mr. Angar is so lucky. He has so many people he can talk to. Um, <laughs> I don't know if he's actually has anyone he can really talk to. Sorry about that. Like, I thought the publisher said it'd be real bad if I said anything, dude. Does he have a mind of his own? <laughs> He's a- you know what he reminds me of? <laughs> Why did he think of everyone else besides a lawyer visiting him? Because he, remi he reminds me of- if you ever watch Gravity Falls, there's an episode of like a boy band, and the guy's like, I genetically engineered them to be the perfect boy band, and they don't have any sense of free will whatsoever. They're like, what is this, bro? This is like, water. <laughs> Mr. Engard, I would like to ask you about the murder. Oh, are you convincing this, uh, are you covering this for the tabloid as a side job, dude? Well, if you want my statement on this, you should ask through my staff. No, I'm not asking on behalf of a tabloid. Hold on a sec. I'm gonna call the president of the studio, okay? Is he alright, Mr. Nick? If we're talking about Mr. Engard's brain here, I wouldn't put my money on it. Sorry about that. The studio president said, even Neil Matt Fuji- Wait, what? Did I say Matt? What the hell? Even Neil Mount Fuji himself knows that I'm not the murderer. Oh, uh, Mr. Nick, what is Neil Mount Fuji? It's a mountain in the city of Neil Old Tokyo, the city that Nickel Samurai protects. Alright, sir. Take a look at this. Mr. Engard, this is an attorney's badge. You know what this is? It's pretty shiny. I know. Don't get distracted. Dude, I'm sorry. But I don't have the free time to be, like, looking at things. Huh? I'm much too busy with Nickel Samurai stuff now. I don't have the time to take a lawyer's correspondence course. Why does he believe I'm a salesman? Insurance? Then extinguishers? Now this? Dude, I know I like to throw money around. But it's not like I buy anything and everything. I just buy everything and anything. And a shit ton of hair gel. What's that? It's a ticket from the press conference. You were going to give someone after winning the Grand... Uh, you were going to give one after winning the Grand Prix, right? Huh? Me? Yeah. While you're, while you're in costume, no less. Um, I never heard anything like that, dude. I only heard about the stage now, and the stage show. I also have that kind of stuff to my- I also leave that kind of stuff to my manager. My manager, bro. <laughs> he doesn't know- he doesn't know? That's odd. It's almost like someone set him up. Mr. Nick, what are you doing with that? I don't know yet, but I figure I could at least show it to him. Is that a transceiver? Hey, it looks like a real nice one, too. Can I buy it? It's got it. I got it as a present from someone. Hmm, interesting. I've also been instructed to take your case. Is that what you heard from the transceiver? Yes. Dude, that's terrible. Don't let some disembodied voice boss you around, man. This is coming from a man with a cell phone on his wrist. Well, dude, I think it's about time for me to get going. Please wait. I really need to- Get going! Where the hell are you going? You're locked up! <laughs> Please wait. I really need to take your case. There's always other people in need of a lawyer, right? Want me to introduce you to a few? Please let Mr. Nick represent you. Man. Oh man. Lawyers these days. Now you dudes use kids to pull in clients too? If you don't take me as your lawyer, then the killer's going to- Wait. What'd you say, bro? Do you kill her? The killer? What's he doing? He's looking like he's mumbling over something. Alright, dude. I accept your terms. Huh? I'll let you represent me in court. You, you did it. You did it, Mr. Nick. Oh, uh, yeah. I guess I did. I don't feel any better for it. And he doesn't look too happy either. Go ahead. Ask me anything. I'll help out as much as I can. Oh, didn't mean to click that. Man, I think my lucky star is that people know my name. Well, you're quite the hero. 
you're in the national spotlight. I didn't know who he is. Does that mean I'm not a good citizen? No, that means you're a perfect citizen. I love you, bro. You're great. Ah, it's really great to be the Nickel Samurai. Dude, lately I just keep on getting more and more popular. Like, I can't handle all the bitches that I'm hanging with. It's like too many of them. True enough. Nickel Samurai is very popular amongst high schoolers in security... Securities? Oh, securities right now. Wow, I'm sitting here like, what? Did I say securities? Secretaries. What the hell's wrong? Is that the word? I can't read. I guess Mr. On Guard has a way of catching the eyes of women. Do you know... Do you know my motto? Refreshing like a spring breeze. That's what I am. A spring breeze? That's why this kind of scandal is, dis is uh, disastrous, dude. I mean, even if I get out of here tomorrow, you're still gonna look bad. But everyone, everyone loves a good scandal. Especially one with murder. Can you tell me about your activities last night? After I got the award, I took a break and went back, back to my room. I had that post-ceremony stage show to do. So I was in my Nickel Samurai costume. And you know you're alone the entire time, right? My manager was running around being busy, so yeah. Because of the press conference you were supposed to hold after the show? I told you, dude. I have no idea about any press conference, right? That's strange. I thought that Nickel Samurai was going to confess something. Anyways, when I was leaving my room, that's when I noticed it was kind of noisy. Mr. Cordea was really dead at the time. Was really? Was already dead. Yeah. It's what I gathered anyway from my manager. I'm beginning to gather that this guy can't do anything on his own. And that's when the detective in the green coat showed up. He searched me, and then, out of the blue, the dude arrested me. And you and the victim, Mr. Juan Cordea, what sort of... That's got nothing to do with anything, dude. Man, with a face of his, he can't even tell he's the same age as me. And they're the same age? <laughs> I'm sorry? Oh! Oh! My man's got salt and pepper in his hair! What do you mean? That's a lie. That's a lie. That's a lie. That's a lie. I'm not believing it. He wanted to try and he wanted to try to make the Jam and Ninja movie even though he was old. <laughs> Dude looks 50, I know. He he looks uh -huh. that's crazy. Jam and Ninja movie, even though we all know it fail. The Nickel Samurai still won in the end, right? Yeah, I took the Grand Prix by storm. So why would I, the winner, have any reason to kill the guy anyways? Dude, you think it'd be the other way around, you know? Um, do you know why you're, why you were arrested? I guess maybe my full body search went back, what, full body search? Yeah, you stick a finger up your ass, is that what happened? Did you find something on you? They found a button from the Jammin' Ninja's costume. A button. I don't get it either. It was caught in the in the plants of my plants? Pleats? <laughs> Matt was old with plant surgery, but they really made the other dude 21. <laughs> I don't know, man. That's crazy. Is it me or does he look like a fucking King of Fighters character? Uh, caught in the pleats of my samurai pants and Hakam Hakamama, whatever. Dude, I really think someone planted it there though. I'm serious. I'm like, for cereal, man. Hang 10, bro. <laughs> like, 420, my guy. I wonder if that's what really happened. I guess this is all about... Oh, uh, I guess this is all about all I'm gonna get out of him. Mr. Nick? Yeah? Let's ask one last thing. Let's test Mr. On Guard to see if he really is innocent or not. We can do that. Oh, yeah. Let's just fucking... Mind, mind beam into his fucking head. Yeah. If you use this. I feel like, I feel like Pearl is the devil on my shoulder. She's like, she's, she's Emperor Palpatine in the background. I'm holding lightsabers up to his head. And she's like, do it. Do it. Kill him. Do it. We won't be able to hide any secrets from you, Mr. Nick. I'm sure of it. I get it. Mr. On Guard. I'd like to ask you one more question. Please answer me honestly. 
What is it, dude? Did you kill Mr. Juan Cordea? Please put the phone away and answer this question yourself. Alright. So that we're clear, dude. I didn't kill anyone. And that includes Juan Cordea, okay? He's telling the truth. Well, Mr. Nick? Nothing. Not a chain or lock in sight. Which means it's alright to trust him. Yeah, it does appear that way. Well, at least I can breathe a sigh of relief knowing my client is innocent. I'm not buying it. Meh. <laughs> I'm not buying it. Like, we've all can... We, we can all clearly see that this man can't think for himself. But what if... What if... Just hear me out here. It's a stretch, but I'm still gonna go for it. What if, somehow, they were doing some sort of rehearsal... And the rehearsal called for something dangerous. Right? And then he just did it because his manager told him to, or whoever, the director. And in, in his eyes, he's like, nah, bro, that's just special effects, so I ain't kill nobody. But what if he is a murderer? Um, the trial's tomorrow, right? I'm going on, I'm going to count on you, dude. Like, like, my life's in your hands, bro. So, we gotta get... There's no way. There's no way we're getting this in one trial. There's no way. It's not happening. It's too intricate. <laughs> Pearl Palpatine. Pearl Palpatine. <laughs> well, at least we were able to get Mr. Matt Engard... Uh, Engard? Yeah, and damn, I am saying it right. On guard, on our client, as our client. We know what he didn't do, which is very important. So, so now what would he do? What, what he did? What he do? Why did I say that? My ghetto-ness is coming out. Well, the trial's tomorrow, and we only get one chance. There's only one way to prove Mr. On guard's innocence. We have to find the real killer. Okay, then let's start looking. I think it's a bad idea to bring a child with me to go find a killer, but I mean, heh. I mean, Maya was like, Maya was 16 when she started. No, not 16, 17 when she started. Alright, guess we'll... I don't think... He's probably in for questioning, I would assume. Oh no, he's still here. Ah, oh, the lawyer dude! So what do you want to find out? Oh well, I'm still in the middle of investigating. I see. But I've already told you everything I know, dude. Yeah, I believe that. What happened to the victim? Can you tell me about your activities last night? After I got the award, I took a break and went back to my room. I had the pro-ceremony pro? pro stage show to do, so I was in my Nickel Samurai costume. You were alone the entire time. My manager was running around. He was busy as shit. Because of the press conference? Alright, so I'm assuming that we already had the time. Yeah. There we go. About you and the victim, Juan Cordea, sort of. It's nothing to do with it. So it's basically the same thing, but I just want to check them off, make sure. Alright. Peace out, Max. Max? Matt? My bad. Hmm. March 21st, Gatewater Hotel. Hey, what do you think you're doing? You can't come in without... Good morning. Hold on, it's you! What are you doing around here? Um, uh... I heard poor Juan was killed. Is that true? It's a bad... It's a bad rerun. Oh, wow. I, I had, like, a moment. It's a bad rerun, is what this is. Another steel samurai doing the most evil deeds. You know, that's not entirely... I'll have you know that I was a huge fan of Juan's. He was the Juan. The chosen Juan. Who said he would bring balance to the Force. <laughs> the chosen Juan. Why, why, oh, why do all these stars I'm interested in drop one by one like flies? It's always been that way, and, um, alright, she's going on her tirade. I'm gonna let her talk. Queen Reaper? I looked away for a second, I looked back and said Queen Reaper. Um, actually, I wanted to ask you about the murder and what happened. Hmm. Don't push me, boy. Alright, Kratos, calm down. She's like, boy. <laughs> um, I couldn't hear everything she said because she was talking too fast. Me too, Pearl. I couldn't even read it all. 
Miss Oldbag, could you please speak a little slower? Don't boss me around, you spiky-haired smarty pants. Right, a tat 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 tat. <laughs> All right. The victim. My dear Hammer died a year ago in a dreadful murder, and only recently did I finally find a star that make this heart go doki doki again. I don't know what to say. I ask you, why does every star I cheer for always end up kicking the bucket? Hmm. I want your words. No one's gonna get away with saying anything bad about my Juan. My chosen Juan. But I haven't said anything. Well, I don't believe a word that woman says anyways. Huh? What woman? The irritating backwater girl with the afro and the horrible country accent. I mean, what's the matter of speaking- What's the, What is that matter of speaking supposed to be? And why does she never stop? Honestly, women these days, they don't know the meaning of the word modesty. When I was young and made, I was beautiful. Okay, all right. She's just gonna go. Why is she dressed like that? I get. I guess it's her uniform. I don't know. I really don't know why she's dressed like that. Pearls, are you thirsty? Um, a little. Okay, I'll go get you some juice or something. Thank you very much. Hey, you paying attention? Youngins today. So I'm guessing Miss Oldbags heard everything from Lada. I want, I want to ask you about what's happened around the time of the murder. Ah, uh, I don't know anything about that. I was get, I was here getting ready. Getting ready? For what? The show, of course. Well, and the press conference afterwards. Cue mysterious music for the magical press conference. Anyways, I don't know anything about, about the murder. I uh, see. But... Huh? But if you're talking about what I saw, that's different. I saw it very clearly. What? I saw the most important moment of the night. The most important moment? You don't mean... Oh, so now you treat me with respect, you disrespectful child. When you speak to your elders, you should always be polite. Real kids today. Really kids today. Wow. Please tell me. What'd you see? Oh, you're a liar. You're lying about something stupid. Oh my gosh, she has four of them! The murder last night was gruesome, wasn't it? But then, what murder is it? Please don't stray on to another tangent, please. If you want to hear more, then show the respect and bring this lady a present. Ah, damn it. Alright, shit. You win this round, you old bitch. Looks like the investigation is still in full swing. The hotel staff and the police are running out like a bunch of hellish chickens. Running out? Running around. I wonder if we can do anything, any investigation on our own in the case of... I wonder if we can do any investigation on our own in this case of atmosphere. In this case of... Did I read that right? Whatever. <laughs> well, got to roll up... Well, got to roll up the sleeves and try, I guess. Sure. Let's head to the hallway. March 21st. Hey! Been waiting for you, Mr. Lawyer. Lotta. Hey. Mr. Compfella. The thief showed his face. What? Arrest him. Put him on trial. Find him guilty. Give him the death penalty. What's wrong, Lotta? You feeling alright? Looky here. Looky here? Why did I say that? Looked here and there and up and down the mountain, but it ain't here. So why don't you just hurry up and give it back to me, you creep? Um, what are you looking for? My camera! It's my lifeblood. I'm gonna die without my $700 camera. Your camera? Looks, don't... Uh, look. Don't a lot of people say the criminal always goes back to the scene of the crime? And looky looky, here you are. Yep, I'm here. Faced with a lot of trouble. Damn! Damn! Phoenix, leave her with her dignity at least! Huh. Even Pearl was shocked. She's like, damn! Roasted her? I had a fire under her. God damn it. Alright, well. What do you think about Gumshoe? Um, do you know anything? I told you many times now, I'm a journalist. I got so much info and lap in my head, I forget things. Alright. Okay, Lotta. I just wanna I just want to see something funny. Well maybe you're gonna talk shit about Gumshoe. 
So you lost your camera? I ain't no ordinary camera. You buy it in a store and it's uh, your 16,000 brand new. Wow. Did I say 16,000? My bad. 1,600. Huh? But didn't... I, I pressed the X button before I can read it. Damn it. I had a nice long talk with the guy at the store. About five hours, I reckon. I made this itty bitty scratch on it and the manager got all huffy up in my face. I gave him... I gave me his talk. Wait, what? He gave me his talking to and was real, real mean about it too. He doesn't. He does. Uh, he don't make me cry. I need. I need. I need like any clarity of mind. I can't read tonight. Why did you lose your camera last night after the murderer happened? Murderer, murder. Must have been when I was busy running around looking into things. And that's when I lost sight of my dear darling, expensive sweetie. Lotta, what did you capture with the expensive camera of yours? I don't over- I don't- I don't righty know- what? Rightly. Great reading tonight. Bullshit. That's a lie. I don't rightly know. I snapped a shot of anything that caught my eye. So I don't remember. And sides, I couldn't get anything for my big scoop. I wonder if Lotta's missing camera is even connected to the murder. Uh, that is- that is a very phallic looking camera case. Lana, please tell me what, <laughs> what you know. What, eh. Please tell me what you know about what happened at the time of the murder. Well, before the ceremony last night, I was hanging around here in this area. Yeah, actually, I was here until morning. Until morning? Why did I add that? Why did I say that? I read too fast that I just add words. What the hell is wrong with me? Yeah, actually, I was here until around the time Mr. Engar was arrested. What are you doing here? You sure? Yeah. You sure we went to school, city boy? Whatever a lot of heart goes, there's a story to be found, a big scoop to be had. Big scoop. I told you before, I'm gonna be the best tabloid photographer the world's ever seen. Reckon course that means I'm always looking for the perfect shot. I wonder what scoop she was after this time. Although, I was also on the lookout for the other stars that were here. So, maybe I wasn't here the entire time. Lada, are you sure you weren't here the entire time? So you could take a picture for your big scoop? Well, maybe I was, but that's what real journalists do. I got some juicy inside info, so I thought to myself, why not get a picture of the proof? What kind of story was in what kind of story was that you were hanging around here? What? <laughs> ah, she has two locks. Oops, sorry, Mr. Lawyer. Can't be telling you that. Trade secrets, you know. Not again. Why does everybody have something to hide? We've been stopped, haven't we? <laughs> yeah, take that, Mr. Lawyer. I'm glad someone around here is happy. Miss Lada and your, and your I rule smile. Damn it. All right. Hmm. Well, right now, I don't have anything. Just gotta find her camera. I have this fucking photo of the Nickel Samurai. He looks cool as shit. All right, let's see. Oh, hotel room. Oh, this doesn't look dangerous as hell. Um, where are we? We're in Mr. Matt on guard's dressing room. This is our client's room. May I help you with something? Oh, Samus Aran, what are you doing here? <laughs> You're Mr. on guard's lawyer, correct? I gather as much. I also look for lawyers on my end, but no avail. Um, how do you know I'm his lawyer? She looks, she's one, she's just, she's literally just Samus. She's literally just Samus. Zero suit Samus right now. <laughs> you were just saying that he's your client. In a situation like this, the only person who would use such a word would be his lawyer. Wow. It's simple deduction, really. The trial's tomorrow. And Mr. Ungard's situation is looking rather grim. So you came here on t on uh, came here one stop in your mad dash to find clues to build his case, correct? Well, you're not totally right, but you're not totally off either. It's really not the time to be showing off, Mr. Nick. I'm Why 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 can I say her name? <laughs> I'm at a loss. Age Is that supposed to be Adrian? Adrian? 
It's not supposed to be Adrian, is it? Is it supposed to be Adrian? I've actually never seen that name before. I take a sip of my water. All right. I'm Adrian Andrews. Is it Adrian? Is it really Adrian? Yeah, let's... So it is Adrian. Okay. All right, just making sure. I've never seen that. I've never seen the word, uh, the name spelled before. I hate to waste time, so let's get down to business. Let's get down to business. To defeat the Hun. She may be, she may be small stature, but appearances can be deceiving. Small stature? She looks tall as hell to me. Well, not tall as hell. She's not Von Karma tall, but... How tall is she? Oh, we don't get her profile. Damn it. Hey, Adrian, what do you think about this? I'd like to ask you about this. I told you, I hate trifling matters. It's a waste of time to show me things that are not relevant to me. Hmm. Wow, this is the first time I've been shut down this badly. Really, Nick? I think you've been shut down worse. Actually. You got it. Alright. Just making sure. <laughs> I assume the first thing you need to know is what everyone was doing that night, correct? Yes, that's correct. Then I will tell you. Before the aw awkward... Wow. I was gonna... I read it as awkward. Before the award ceremony, I had dinner with Mr. On Guard. In this very room, I might add... Dinner? What'd you eat? I told you. I hate to waste time with trifling details. Alright. If you took a look at the table yourself, you wouldn't need to ask... Hmm. Why did I say it like that? I, like, stuttered when I said the word ask. I bet she's not a lot of fun at parties. I bet she's super fun at parties. I like her. When the award shows was starting... I'm headed for the for the viola hall. Uh, blah, blah, blah. For the viola hall. And after the show ended, you came back to this room. No, I had some small errands to run. I helped with the preparations in the lobby. Oh, preparations for the post ceremony show, I guess. When it was time for the post ceremony show, I came back to call for Mr. On Guard. After that, I went to visit Mr. Cordea. And that's when you found his body, isn't it? You really held strong. Uh, you really held strong through... Uh, you really held strong through everything. Yeah, she does seem to be mentally tough as nails. And that's why I like her, she's the best. Hmm, so, about you and... Stop right there. You aren't seriously about to ask how Mr. On Guard and I are related, are you? Sorry. I have no idea how he could choose you as his lawyer. Why does she have to go and say something like that? Mr. Nick, calm down and hang in there. I'll give you a shoulder rub to relieve your stress later, alright? Alright, give you I already gave you my name earlier, but I added that I'm Mr. Ungard's manager. A Franzesca in a different way? Like calmer? Yeah, she's very like stern, but instead of eccentric, she's more calm. Instead of ready to beat my ass, she's just like hating me on the inside. Speaking of managers, did the victim, Mr. Cordea, have one? No, he did not. He didn't? Global Studios has a very different policy for Worldwide Studios than that. Worldwide Studios does not assign individual managers to their stars. I see. This industry is very ruthless and unforgiving. Actually, you look quite ruthless and unforgiving yourself to be to your poor partner. Dragging a little girl like, like her to places like this? Honestly. You're wrong! I'm doing this to help Mystic Maya! Pearls, calm down and hang in there. I'll buy you juice later, alright? Mm. Okay. Then, what do you think about this? You were the one taking care of the arrangements for the press conference, right? Yes, that's right. Then Mr. Engard said he didn't know about it. Hmm. Is that what he said? Huh? Actually, I didn't know all the details either. It was a request from the public from the pub, eh, publicity department. All I did was help out and do what I was what I was asked. Oh, I see. I wonder about that. I wouldn't take her to be the type of person to do something without knowing the details. Yeah, as she put in her own words, she'd rather not deal with trifling details. Eh. I assume that you would want to know every bit of detail. What about this? You know anything about this? Nope, of course not. Nope. 
I highly doubt. All right, well, I think that's everything here for you. I don't think there's anything out of the ordinary here. Looks like dishes left over from dinner. Dinner for two at that. I'm sure they're, I'm sure they're Mr. Ungard's and Mrs. Andrews' plates. Looks like they had T-bone steaks. <laughs> What's with glow? I was, I was literally about to say the same thing. What's with these fucking actors and T-bone steaks? Damn it. No clues there. Can I not check the weapons? There's some samurai looking clothes on the sofa here. I think it's a jacket looking thing that's called the hobby. Whatever it is, I'm sure something like that would make a great souvenir. Maya would be absolutely thrilled. She would even steal it. Hmm. It's probably Mr. On Guard's suitcase. For someone who was only going to be here for an award show, it's a lot of stuff. Think you ever had a T-bone steak? I think I've had... I'm pretty sure I've had a T-bone steak. Yeah, I definitely did. But like... But when, whenever you're cooking steak... And I'm, I'm not trying to get into the steak argument here. But all I'm going to say is this. Living with a black family. Man, I hate the way they cook their steak most of the time. <laughs> it is too chuff. Too, too chuff? Wow. Too tough and chewy. I can't. It's, it's rough, man. They like to burn it and over season it. But I will say that I do like a well done steak. But that, that's not how you cook it. That, that is not how you cook a well done steak. Stars really are different from us, aren't they? Yeah, they are, Pearl. Well, gotta leave it tender. Exactly. Like anyone who says that a well done steak is always tough and chewy, they're wrong. They just don't know how to cook it. Now am I saying they're wrong for, for eating their shit raw? No, I'm not saying they're wrong. I'm just saying they're nasty. <laughs> Hostility. Oh, man, eat your steak however you feel like. I really don't care. <laughs> but just don't tell me that that well-done steaks are terrible. You just gotta, you gotta know how to cook it. You gotta tenderize that meat. There's multiple ways you can do it. Multiple. There's too many, actually. Oh my fucking god. What kind of psychopath is this? What the hell? Mr. Nick, where are we? We're in Mr. Juan Cordea's room, Pearls. Mr. Cordea? The victim. Which means this is a crime scene too. Oh, it's you. It's a crime scene with a million witnesses. I think that fucking evil bear giving me the stink guy in the background did it. You see him? He's right next to Winnie the Pooh. So what happened? The kidnapper? Has he contacted you yet? Not yet. He probably won't until we win Mr. Engard's acquittal. That always cooks that shit rare. It grosses me out. Is it rare or medium rare? Does he really cook it rare? Because rare, you just throw it on the skillet for like two seconds. I mean, I, ra I don't eat either rare or medium rare. I like well done. And trust me, I've tried both. But, like, you just gotta tenderize it, man. Rare. Oh, fuck. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, I can't be having that. Not medium rare, rare. Damn. Uh, your dad's an animal. You know, <laughs> that's fucked up. You doing okay, pal? Hang in there. I just want Maya to be all right. Everything's gonna be all right. You don't have a lot of time left, but I'm gonna help you as much as I can, pal. Can you do that? Even if we went looking around the crime scene? Just this once, special circumstances, right? I'll even tell you everything I know, but you gotta keep it quiet. It's my neck on the line here. Thank you. Oh, that's right. I got you guys a map of the hotel, pal. Here you go, little missy. Wow, you're giving it to me? Thank you. Haha, <laughs> what did you want? I wouldn't want you to get lost in a hotel too big for your own good. Mr. Nick, I got a map. It's great, Pearls. Um, Mr. Nick, I can't read what it says. Damn it. <laughs> you don't know how to tell him though. Oh wait, he does wait, does he cook yours rare too and hands it to you? Oh no. <laughs> oh no, that's the worst. See me, see the problem with me was that for some reason, for like a long time, every night for dinner, 
my family just ate steak and potatoes and it got to a point where i just went first of all i don't even like steak second of all i like potatoes but i was like second of all, i don't even like it how they cook it so i just said you know what i'm not eating this shit i'm done you guys are you guys can also that's way too much red meat fucking i said i don't like the way you cook steak i don't like it it's gross i don't even like steak anymore killed it for me so I was like, so now, most of the time I'll eat like chicken and turkey. I love it. It's good. Do you know what, uh, do you know the cause of death? Well, technically, the final autopsy report isn't out yet, but one look at the victim should tell you, pal. It should. Was he stabbed with a sword? Like how that Power Ranger dude did it? Yeah, here's a picture. Oh yeah, he was super stabbed. Oh wow, not just with a sword, with like a dinner knife? What the hell? Someone just like played darts with him. Why is his Why is his suit missing a little like coupling thing? Huh. Oh, that's a button. Never mind. That's one of the buttons that came off, I guess. Getting too hungry for this time of night. <laughs> exactly. Well, my whole schedule is fucked anyways, because, you know, I do I work overnight, so my eating schedule is fucked regardless. There's a knife in his chest. Yeah, pal. That's the murder weapon. So, he was stabbed to death? They're looking at the fingerprints down in the lab right now. There were fingerprints on the knife? Yep. And it looks like they're pretty sure they're Mr. Unguard's prints, pal. That's bad. Real bad. Not good. Too late to cook, too poor to order. I know the feeling. For me, it's not, it's not too late to cook. Too poor to order is definitely a thing. To me, it's, it's not too late to cook. It's don't want to cook because then, because then I'll just make more dishes. Because for some reason, and everyone in my house makes like a million dishes, and I just try my best not to use dishes. Because then the moment the moment I have one dish compared to like their hundred, and I put it and I put it in the corner, right? They'll be like, "Well, if you're sitting here cleaning dishes, why don't you clean all of them?" And I'm like, "No, nope, not doing that. That's not happening." Why was, Miss uh, why was Mr. Ungard arrested? Because he had evidence on him. Evidence? That and people like to stare down my back when I'm cooking. That's why I don't cook that much. I only cook when people aren't there. And I make some good ass food. It looks like the victim Juan Cordea really put up a big fight. Oh wow, that looks- oh my god. And none of his bears helped them out? Jesus, look at that drink on the <laughs> Nice to know that everything got fucked up on the table besides the one drink. Oh yeah, look at the crime scene. You can tell. There's signs of a struggle everywhere. Well, yeah, during the fight, his button came off. Our son Gar said something about a button. Something like one of the Jammin' Ninja's buttons got caught in his hamaka. Hakama. <laughs> All you make is pasta. Or one dish and stick to it. Yeah, but don't you like to... Don't you like to have that? Well, first of all, I like to have that moment where I'm just chilling out and just cooking shit because I can do it and I feel I feel good about myself. <laughs> but then it's also to show off people be like, look how good I can cook things, but you'll never have it because you always breathe down my neck when I cook. So, <laughs> so I only cook for me. <laughs> there was a there was a witness, pal. A witness? Who's that? The lady, Miss Oldbag. Please, anyone but her. The prosecution has uh, plenty of evidence to make a solid case. Not to mention, there's something around here. Uh, there's something around where the Vic was. That what? There's something around where the Vic was. That's a little off. Am I having a stroke? Not to mention, there's something around where the Vic was. That's a little off. I, I think I think I'm having a, I think I'm having a stroke. But don't like the amount of dishes left from one recipe. Exactly. Like, that's why that's why when I put stuff in the oven, and you and you wait, vicinity. <laughs> Where the Vic was, that's a little. <laughs> okay, okay. There there was no comma in that. Sentence. Get the hell out of here. Something something that's a little off. As in, <laughs> as in, like I knew he meant victim as a victim, but there was no comma in there. 
I didn't see a comma. Was there a comma? As in, that's for you to figure out, pal. Aren't you supposed to be helping me? All right, let's try to figure it out, Mr. Nick. All right, oh, let's try and figure it out. I instantly walk out the room. All right, let's see. I'm telling you, the mer this bear knows everything. This one right here, he knows it all. Violets of cosmetics are scattered all over the floor. This is probably where Mr. Cordea found his assailant. Found? Fought. Where are these bits of glass from? A flower vase, maybe? There are flowers on the floor, but I don't know what they are. You don't know much about flowers, do you, Mr. Nick? I'm sorry. I'm sorry, miss. I don't know what a train is. Excuse me? <laughs> this is a guitar case, I guess. A little beat up, but still usable. That's strange. The guitar's not here. Maybe he forgot to bring it to the show? But Mystic Maya, she said the bright red guitar was the Jammin' Ninja's signature item. That's true. Huh? This guitar case is wet, but it's only wet on the top of, uh, well, on the top of wood. The lid. The lid. <laughs> uh, only did it to help with the phrasing. <laughs> My bad. Oh no, it's not your bad. I'm just saying, like, I'm just saying, it, it can, can we call that a typo? It technically was a typo. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna think, <laughs> so I'm gonna make a sandwich. Make a good ass sandwich. You know what's really good? I have this, uh, like this sriracha mayo hybrid sauce thing. Put that on a sandwich. That shit's delicious. Yeah. <laughs> There's no water inside the case. This is, uh, this is water, isn't it? Guitar case. It's a beautiful wine glass, and there's tomato juice in it. Or tomato. <laughs> Ew, tomato juice. I don't like it that much. There's a bottle of it on the table over there. It's probably where it came from. But doesn't it seem weird? Yeah, that everything's knocked off besides the juice? What well, seems weird? I mean, everything else is scattered all over the floor. She's right. The flower vase was broken, and the makeup is strewn... Strewn? Strewn? Strewn everywhere. Sounds immaculate. Not really, you just buy it. You just buy it in the store. You're just sitting right there on the shelf. <laughs> Why is this glass the only thing the only thing that still is all alright? I can't speak. What was immaculate is that uh the store near me had like a limited time item. And it was caramel apple juice. So you drunk it tastes like apple juice and had an aftertaste of caramel and it was so delicious but I can't get it no more I'm not I'm pretty sure I can get it if I look for it online but but you know it looks like Mr. Cordea has dinner had dinner last night this bottle is tomato juice we had a lot of food at the award show last night but I wonder if it's if the stars had gone off uh, had gone on stage after only eating a, me a meager meal like this there's a little radio over here. Why does he have so many fucking bears in this room? What the hell is good with this? Hmm. So messy here. Crowley likes things neat and tidy, I take it. There are lots of electronic things here and I've never that I've never seen before. Hey Mr. Nick, tell me what they are, pretty please. Okay. That over there is a watch. You wear it around your wrist. I know what a watch is, jackass. Oh my bad. Oh I'm sorry. Miss, look at the flowers. Miss, I don't know what a train is. How dare you. It's a suitcase. There's so many things in it, and I bet it's barely closed. There is clothes, a dryer, an electric shaver, a calculator. Do all the stars pack too much stuff like Mr. Cordea? Why would he need a calculator? Is he doing like his tax? Oh, you know what? He doesn't have a manager, so I guess he would bring a calculator with him to do like paperwork and stuff. Is that... Oh, that's a coffee machine. I thought this was an air fryer for a moment. I have an air fryer in my room. You can make a lot of good things with it. Put sweet potato fries in an air fryer. Delicious. And your room smells like sweet potatoes. It's great. There are all sorts of things in the refrigerator. The carrot juice bottle and the tomato juice bottle are both empty. Empty? It's too much of a hassle to throw them away, I guess. They're all vegetable juices. I guess we, I guess we must have been a real health nut. Oh, there's a beet. Some ketchup and a bottle of strawberry jam, too. Maybe red was his favorite color? Huh. 
air fryer in my motherfucking room. He said, you got air fryer in your motherfucking room? What's up? <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> I do. Hey man, air fryers are great. You can, you know, you can fry, you know, you can fry things with air. <laughs> Don't need, you need either very little or no grease at all. Me, I use no grease at all. So, you know, you make some sweet potato fries and that, delicious. You can cook chicken in that too. You just got to know how to keep it nice and tender. You know, got to, got to mix it up. It's a small air fryer. It's not a big one. It has like a little, like a little handle thing. You just put in whatever, like maybe two pieces of chicken cup of fries or something right and your room sm starts smelling delicious I have a mini fridge in here too so sometimes I'll put like things in there um what the hell am I doing present you know anything about this camera nope all right what we got here got a map and we have a murder scene let me see if there's anything off in this murder scene Hmm. So he was sitting in that chair over there. Okay. <laughs> Need a mini fridge? You just gotta make sure to keep things on the mini fridge. The tomato juice is on there too. Right after he died. I'm just, I'm really trying to see, like, can I not, can I not check that cell phone out? No? I love how nobody's freaked out with all these bears. He's really on to some, some shit here. So that's a bed, right? Yep, it's big. I know what a watch is, she says, but she doesn't know what a bed is. Okay. Oh, Mr. Nick is so soft. Big beds must be a rarity for her. Yeah. It's like, that's a... That's the fabled bed. I've never seen it before. All right, so tell me about this murder scene. You look at this photo and you can't help it. It makes you want to say, I can't believe this is the scene of a murder. Stab with a knife after a struggle. The clue is sleeping in this photo somewhere, I know it. Me too, that's why I was looking at it. Something rubs me the wrong way. What can you tell me about this guitar case? Oh, that? It's just what I heard, pal. That's the Jammin' Ninja's signature item. The guitar case? No, not that. What do you... What do you take me as? I mean, the guitar inside, of course. But the guitar's missing. Yeah, we looked for it, too. It's not normal for a person to forget to bring their most famous item to an award show. It's starting to sound like the red guitar is related to the case, after all. Of course it is. So about this wine glass. Ah, so you noticed it, too, pal. The whole crime scene was a mess, but this wine glass was the only thing that was untouched. You noticed that too, Detective Gumshoe? No, actually Miss Von Karma noticed it first. Damn it! <laughs> I was really about to give him props for that. Hey, Pearl noticed it before me too. Hey, wait a minute. So, does that mean Miss Von Karma is here at the hotel? Yeah, she's around. Man, you're gonna be in so much trouble. Especially if she catches you in here. Well, you can be... <laughs> We can bet the instant I see her, I'll be running a thousand meter dash. Oh. Oh no. Oh no, she's on her way. Oh no. What, what's that beeping noise, Mr. Nick? Hmm. I heard this sound somewhere before. It's Miss Von Karma. Huh? For some reason, whenever I hear the sound, she pops up out of nowhere and whips me. Come to think of it, that's exactly what happened last time. Sorry. I gotta make myself scarce, scarce. Later, pal. Ah! Oh my god. Oh no. At last, you reveal your true nature, Mr. Phoenix Wright. <laughs> Would it be too much to ask for you to be nice to me for a change? So you're the type to steal information from pitiful, hopeless detectives. That's, that's very dishonorable of you. Ow! Hey, don't you dare run away, scruffy Mick Trenchcoat. <laughs> I didn't think that detectives can, of this country could be this pitiful. Ah, detective, come over here for a second. Look away, Pearl. Oh, shit. Oh, no. 
You should beat him into submission. I feel better knowing at least you were man enough to face your punishment. He was so scared, he just froze up on the spot. Mr. Phoenix Wright, you, you have soiled my perfect prosecution record. I'll never forgive that. This time, victory is mine. Victory is yours? Is that all this means to you? What? Hm. Come, Scruffy. <laughs> Come, Scruffy! The investigation briefing is about to begin. Yes, sir. This isn't over yet. I swear on my family's honor. What family honor? Your family has no honor. Your dad ruined it. What's this? Well, I guess this means I've got to get back to the precinct now. If you ever need me, come down to the Criminal Affairs Department, all right? And if you can, try not to let Miss Von Karma see you. <laughs> she just she just came here and beat all our asses. It's so hard for me to hate her. Didn't he just hand me something? Am I crazy? What happened to it? Huh. Well, I'm guessing there's nothing else in here. Hey, Lada, how's it going? I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna leave you to it. Uh... <laughs> my spirit has been broken. Hey, Adrian. What do you think about this? Oh, come on. Come on. What about this tomato juice? Alright, what about this case? Alright, see, I thought you would actually help me out here, Adrian, but you're kind of not doing anything, so I'm just gonna skedaddle. Hmm. Okay. Thanks, Lotta. Thanks for nothing. Thanks for a lot of nothing. Thought somebody would help me, but I guess not. Oh, hey, Mr. Wright. How are you? Oh, Mr. Powers, have you been here the entire time? Yeah, people connected to the murder aren't allowed to go home, let alone leave. Oh, really? Damn. Hey, dude, wanna see a dead body? Ah, damn it. Can you tell me a little more about the Nickel Samurai's TV show? Okay. The Nickel Samurai is an action hero program aimed towards kids. It's the sequel to... The Steel Samurai. I see. This time, there are three Samurai brothers, Aluminum, Samurai, and Tin Samurai. And of course, the Nickel Samurai. It's a Love Y and Neo- what? It's a Love Y? You mean like a love triangle? Huh. It's a Love Y and Neo Tokyo. I see. Wait. A Love what? A Love Y. This girl, Sai- this girl, Sayo, works at the tea shop, and all three guys fall for her at the same time. Oh, I guess the Y shape is like the third brother colliding over the one girl. Anyways, Sayo is actually the daughter of the evil Strawberry Clan leader. What? What is this Brave Fencer Musashi shit? Oh no, the whole you can eat buffet kingdom. Sounds like an unusual situation, like Romeo and Juliet times three. Yeah. Strange thing is, this sort of forbidden love story is really big with the office ladies. Hmm. Yes, Pearl? The hell is my phone going off? What happened next? I want to know. Miss Sayo. Does Miss Sayo fall in love? She does, doesn't she? Every Sunday at 8 a.m. At 8 a.m. 8, 8, 8 is pretty early for a kid's show when you think about it, right? Don't kids usually wake up later? I'm gonna stop watching Kids Masterpiece Theater starting this week. I can't believe she really is considering it. So, what's this Jammin' Ninja TV show like? It started from a it uh, started from a remake of the old movie. To tell you the truth, the Jammin' Ninja, like the Samurai shows, is geared towards kids. It's the story of a ninja who can scale a wall but became a big pop star anyways. A what? He was a real lousy ninja. Absolutely couldn't do any ninja things at all. But boy, could he sing. With his, with his trusty bright red guitar in hand, he took the ancient world by storm. A ninja with a bright red guitar. 
And then the final fight in front of his beloved Princess Misola? Misola. What? Jammin versus the the Maromachi Five. Maromachi Five? Like Mar like like Mariachi? <laughs> Suddenly, our brave hero catches a not so jamming cold the night before Battle Three. Oh, that's too bad for him. Yeah. But this kind of pop music based love story is something high school girls really like. Um, yes, Pearl? What happened next? I want to know. Jammin. The Jammin Ninja. Will he be able to sing? What about Princess M Melosa? M Misola? Every Saturday, every Sunday at 8 a.m. Oh, what show should I watch? Damn it. I can't believe she really is considering it. Huh. Well, that's something new. I can't believe it. A kidnapping. Do you remember what the person looked like who gave this to you? It was the bellboy, and that... And I didn't suspect a thing because he looked like such a normal person. <laughs> yeah, he looked like such a normal guy with fucking... Stitches down his face. Oh, old man, huh? You know anything about this camera? Nope. What about... He didn't react to the dead body. I highly doubt he'll react to any of this shit. Oh! The guitar case? That was Juan's. I'm guessing you've seen this case before. It's pretty famous by now. It stands out because it holds the bright red guitar. The bright red guitar. The Jammin' Ninja's signature item. But if the guitar is so important, how could he forget it for the award ceremony? It doesn't seem... That does seem a little strange. Huh. They called this so suddenly that something about it was just... Seems off, you know? <clears throat> you seen the press conference? Yeah. He said... There's, there's something I'd like to confess if I win. I already faxed his request for a conference in the office only yesterday. Huh, yesterday? Yeah, that's kind of sudden. But I guess his manager set everything up somehow, so he was lucky. Hmm, nice manager. Okay. I think that's it. I don't think there's more I can do with, with Mr. Powers over here. What about you? Alright, Mysterio. <laughs> okay, Mysterio. What about this? Highly doubt you know anything about anything, huh? Oh, actually, we still have those locks. Huh. Totally forgot about those. Let's try let's try removing Lotta's first. Oh. Criminal affairs. Never mind. Hey, look, it's the... What is he called again? The Blue Badger? <laughs> the Something Badger? Justice Badger? <laughs> I have finished making thy sandwich, and it shall be awesome. Hmm. Doesn't look like Mr. Scruffy Detective's here. Great. Now Aunt Pearl's calling him Scruffy. Thanks, Francesca. They said something about an investigation briefing earlier, right? Why don't we come back and try again later when they were done? Okay. I guess, I guess that's all we can do, right, Mr. Nick? <laughs> How's the sandwich? Delicious, godly, amazing. <laughs> hmm. Guess there's nothing we can do, then. I don't think there's anything I can do with... with Chad McChaddington over here, so... I guess we'll move on to Lotta, then. It makes sense to me. Let's see, she's in the hallway. All right, Lotta. Time to open your senses. It's only two locks, how hard can it be? Big scoop. Lotta, will you please answer me? Will you please answer my questions? On the night of the murder, why were you loitering around the victim's room? I told you, didn't I? For my scoop. What I want to know about are the details of this scoop. That's not something I can tell you. I mean, that there's my bread and butter. Alright then, an unpleasant tabloid photographer looking for a scoop. I'm gonna say that you were looking into a scandal. Huh? Could it be that you lot of heart were looking for a break with the huge story? Perhaps an unfolding scandal between Juan and this person. Uh, I don't... 
I don't know nothing, but... How old is she, 23? She's older than Juan? No way! Look at her smug ass look. I highly doubt it, but, you know, what about this? Oh! Was I right? This woman. She's Adrian Andrews, man on guards manager. Huh. The Nickel Samurai manager caught secretly meeting with his rival, the Jammin' Ninja. It would be the most haunted story of the season, wouldn't it? You're pretty good at this guessing thing, Mr. Lawyer. But you can't just make up any old thing and think it'll make the papers. <laughs> he turned into Tony the Tiger for a moment. It's great! Yeah, gotta have the backup. Backup? Yeah, yeah. You gotta have that. That's what it's... New sauce? Oh, the sauce. I see. Hmm. You mean news source. That's it. So show me something that shows that Juan guy had something with Miss Aunt Andrews. Huh. Hmm. I don't think there's anything there. Damn it. You got me this time, Lada. You got me this time. I don't think I have anything. I'll be back. I'll be back. You win this round. Gonna go check his room out. My man has a million bears. There's gotta be something in here. His phone pulled off the wall. Food. Let's see. Oh, wait, I didn't see. See, I thought this was handed to me. I didn't think it was just left on the floor. God damn it. Well, not the floor, on the table. Mr. Nick, what's this piece of paper? It's called an autograph. Autograph? The paper's got Mr. Corneo's name written on it. It says autograph. Can't read it at all. To be honest, I've never seen writing like this. Hmm. Oh, it's a special way of writing. It's called cursive. It's called obsolete. That's what it's called. <laughs> Look here. See how it says to my dearest Wendy in more normal letters here? What in... This is sloppy, unreadable writing. It's crazy and cruel to give this to someone. Hold on. Wendy? I've heard that name somewhere before. Huh. I'll be back, Lotta. I'll be back for you. It's hard for me not to like Lotta. I like her too much. She's cool. She's so chilled back. She's just chilling. Alright, Wendy. Don't have anything to say. Damn it. Isn't she like eight and she can't read? I'll give it to her. She lives in a fucking Mystic Mumble Jumbo fucking cult, cult village. <laughs> who needs, who needs to learn how to read and write when you got spirit powers? Have the ghost do it for you. Alright, I highly doubt that I have anything for, uh, for, for, uh, Wendy here, but it's worth a shot. Open your senses. Four fucking locks. God damn it. It's cursive, too. I'll be honest. My school never, well, before I switched schools... My school never taught me cursive, my ghetto-ass school. They spent, like, one week going, this is cursive, this is how you write it, good luck, and they never came back to it. So whenever someone asks me for my signature, I'm like, really? You're gonna get that shit in print. Alright, I'll be honest with you, for now. Then please, tell us what you saw. But, uh, what a waste. And here I have a perfectly good chance of having a little fun at you youngin's expense. I am a little devil, after all. That doesn't imply you aren't a good person. Alright, I'll give you what you want. Take this! That's... That's Juan's autograph! Yes, it is. And it even says to my dearest Wendy, Juan, that's me, right? Right? I highly doubt it, but... Hmm. My name is Wendy Oldbags, so that Wendy has to be me, right? Well, you may say Wendy. But somehow, I don't think Juan had this Wendy in his mind when he signed it. 
Oh, please give it to me. Let me have it, please. Oh, uh, can't let you have it. Just like that. Yes, yes, I know. And how about exchange? Oh, what the fuck? <laughs> wow, she must have really wanted this autograph. Oh my god. <laughs> my signature is, just, is literally just a scribble, and that's it. I know. Like, it's to the point where whenever I see someone do a signature and I see them do little loops and shit, I'm like, that's not, I'm like, that's not real words. That's not, like, I can just make my, if I really want to, I can just make my signature a penis. Just draw a dick on something and be like, that's my signature. I put that there. That's my mark. So, I wanted to try it on, on old bags first, but I'm pretty sure Wendy is probably Adrian's real name. My, my office isn't good enough for you. Fine. Oh, office. My offer isn't good enough for you. Fine, Mr. Wright, you win. Wendy old bag, ready to open up her heart. Off my dearest Juan. Oh, wow. Really? Just, huh. Okay. Autograph given to Wendy dearest. Technically, technically, it can be whatever you want. <laughs> so what you wit, what you witnessed, Wendy? I feel bad for you now, huh? I tell you, I saw him that night. I saw him coming out of Juan's room. You're kidding? Oh no. It was about ten minutes before Juan's body was discovered. It was just a coincidence. I was on my way to the toilet, minding my own business. And did you tell that to the police? Well, of course. I thought I could get a gift certificate or two out of it. Maybe more. Gift certificate? I've been recruited again for the part of the trial. You know, the trial tomorrow? This time, you're gonna get it. <laughs> okay. Well, she has a obvious vendetta against me. She did say to bring her a present. I mean, yeah, that's true. <laughs> this time, you're gonna get it. I'm gonna work hard to get your client pronounced guilty. But Miss Unguard hasn't done anything bad. Did I say Miss, Mister? <laughs> I don't care about details like that. I know he did. I know he did, dear poor Juan. In I just do. The yellow-bellied chicken. A yellow-bellied chicken. I wonder what that would look like. It would look like a chicken with a yellow belly. Does that answer your question? <laughs> I trust my senses. I know when I when I saw. Us. Ah, I know when someone did something bad. I say he did it. What did Mr. Ungard ever do to her to deserve this? I don't know, he lived and breathed. What did Mr. Ungard do to you to make you so... You don't know? That guy, he framed my Juan. He created that scandal that plagued poor Juan. Mr. Nick, what is this? What's a scandal? Oh, um, I'll tell you about it sometime after we get home. Poor Juan, led astray to be wiles of the vile, temptress. Whales, 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 whales? Mm. Mr. Nick, what does what do vials and whales tentress mean? Uh, um, how about we just listen to what Miss Oldbags has to say for now, okay? So, Miss Oldbags, who is this woman you're talking about? Adrian Andrews, of course. Who else? And that guy, he shoved the girl onto Juan on purpose. His own manager, but why? I thought lawyers were smart. It was just to create a scandal to make Juan lo lose face. That girl drove Juan into a scandal that that, dra uh, that dragged his reputation through the mud. Sounds like a pretty standard definition of a scandal to me. Why do you know about this anyways, Miss Oldbag? I'm one of Juan's biggest fans. I'm always out there gathering information. That's nothing I there's nothing I don't know. And do you have proof that Mr. Ungard did what you say he did? Next week's issue of a certain magazine says so. Huh? Of course, a tabloid. Next week? Does that mean it's something people don't know about yet? Why would Miss Oldbags have information like that? And where did she get it? You're just an evil, evil old lady, huh? Alright, well, all that's left is, uh... Wait, do I not have the... No, I don't. Since I gave it to her, I don't have it. So that wouldn't help me with Lada's case. So I assume I can just head to the criminal affairs. Nope, nothing here. Never mind. Damn it. Hmm. Can you talk to me about Adrian? That's my manager. Did you meet her? 
Oh, yeah. What do you think? Strong woman, right? And she... I totally forgot that I had a voice for him. I'm gonna hurt my throat doing this. I need water first. And she takes good care of me. You're such a mama's boy. Oh, that's it? Really? Oh, come on. I had drunk water and everything. I got ready for you, you son of a bitch. Dude, I know I like throw money around, but it's not like I buy anything and everything. Oh, nothing about this? Really? Damn. Anything about a camera? Yeah, I highly doubt. Huh. You really don't have anything, huh? What about Lotta? You know Lotta? Yeah, of course not. What? What the hell are you doing? Hold a sec. I'm gonna ask the fan club president, okay? Um, dude, you know what? I forgot I asked. Damn. Yeah, I highly doubt that I can do anything with him. Do bros are my favorite characters for some reason? <laughs> yeah. Hey, dude, wanna like hang 10? Or like 20? Or like 420? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, shit. Can I? Did I? Let me head back to Adrian, actually. Oh, wait. Did I even ask you about Adrian? You know anything about Adrian? Hey, there's Miss Andrews. She's Matt's manager. Actually, I was interested in her for a while. I, I see what you mean. Hmm, so Mr. Power likes this type of woman. I see what you mean. <laughs> what do you know about Miss Andrews? Well, see, here's the thing. I don't really know her. Know her, you know? There's sort of a small rumor going around about her right now. A rumor? Ah, if you're interested, I'll be glad to share what I know. He's so happy he looks like a lion that's just found his next meal. Oh, shit. Alright, so tell me about it. What's the deets? Would you mind telling me about this gossip? Oh, so you are interested in it. I figure you would be. Yeah. I have such a weakness for celebrity gossip, too. Oh, really? You do? Yeah. So take a look at this. Looks like a tabloid Miss Oldbax would read. Alright, let's see here. Jim and Midnight Rendezvous. To the mysterious yet beautiful manager to the star, Miss AA. You see now, don't you? What? You can stop pretending to be in the dark, Mr. Wright. Juan Cordea didn't have a manager of his own. Which means... If... Uh, which means, if we're talking about a certain manager with the initials AA... Alcoholics Anonymous. Yes, exactly. This is big news. But it seems kind of odd that the woman Miss Andrews, together with the biggest rival of her client? Huh. And it's wonderful. <clears throat> it's that wonderful thing that can only happen between two people. Mr. Power looks so happy. Pearl's just following along, not having any idea why she's smiling. Well, like the saying goes, one man's garbage is another man's treasure. Magazine clipping. Oh shit. Thanks. Good thing I good thing I thought about that. Hey Lada, I got something for ya. Maybe this will get you talking. Alright. Got two locks. I just got the scandal on my first try. I was like, what would be a scandal? What if her, what if his manager was, you know, making whoopee with the rival? Alright. Show me the newspaper clipping. This is the article from the certain weekly tabloid. Jam and Midnight Rendezvous. To the mysterious and beautiful manager to the stars, Miss AA. Ah, shit. Mr. Cornea didn't have a manager of his own. What's more, his rival, Mr. On Guard manager, Andrew, uh, Adrian Andrews, she had the initials AA. He saw this article and then thought to take some pictures of them as proof. That's why you were lurking around, Mr. Cornarius. Cornarius. He, he has turned into the Smash Brothers stage now, Cornaria. Wow. Um, uh, Mr. C uh, Cor- Fuck, I already forgot how to pronounce his name. Shit, forget it. I hate it, I hate it. What the fuck? What's his first name? Juan, yeah. Mr. Juan, doors last night. <laughs> oh, 
Unlock success. Nice. You're looking into Mr. Uh, Mr. Juan's and Mrs. Andrew's affair, weren't you? You got it. I was going to get myself scooped by catching him in the secret meeting. But there's already an article about it one week uh, in one of the weekly tabloids. It's no longer breaking news. What'd you just say? Her initials are AA. What kind of vague thing is that? It ain't no proof of nothing. People are going to want to see real proof. Well, at least I do. So that's what I was doing, getting photos. Oh. I'm going to whip up the reader's interest with some gossip and a little misleading. And then spice it up a little and have myself an exclusive story. Wow, Lada. Nice journalistic integrity you got there. I already finished writing up my spicy article, you know. But the paper I wrote on it, my note to myself is gone. Your note to yourself. It was inside the case of my $1,600 camera. Duh, they d uh, fuck. <laughs> I lost my... S my brain did like a hard reset. They done run off together. I came, I came here for my big story. Didn't come here to have my treasure disappear on me. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> wow. I just, like, that's a double meaning. Phoenix is like, yeah, I understand. My treasure was stolen from me, too. <laughs> it's enough to make a girl go bonkers, I tell ya. What's with people nowadays? I never thought I'd see the day when someone done steal something from me. You really want that note back, huh? I got no idea why, though. The story on the note is probably a bold-faced lie. Huh. For some reason, the more I hear this music, in the background of my head, I can hear the song The Material Girl playing. <laughs> just take this song and the lyrics of that song, just smash them together. Cause we are living in a material world. I am a material girl. Yeah, that's right. I, I like that song. What about it? All right, back to the hallway. Actually, what what else do I have left to look for? Huh? No one else is lying to me. The only thing I only thing that got upgraded. Yeah, you can hear it exactly. It just like mashes together. It's great. Alright, so the camera got updated. So on the night of the murder, tabloid article about the victim was in the case. Okay. Um I mean I can I can ask Adrian about it. I mean I think there's probably some other things I should ask her about. I don't think I asked her about Matt directly. I asked to become Mr. Ongard's manager. He's a pleasure to manage with a nice disposition. Mr. Ongard does seem a rather weak-willed man, always doing what he's told. He's always saying my manager, right, Mr. Nick? Hmm, what about Juan? Did you know the victim, Mr. Qu uh, uh, Mr. Juan? Yes, I knew him. The world is such a small place, after all. Did you know about his rivalry with Nickel Samurai? Honestly, they were like children when it came to that. Time and time again, those two completely competed with each other over the most trivial things. If either one of them wasn't so stubborn, there would be no one who would have needed to die. I got a hunch that this woman knows more than she's letting on. Oh, you do, Phoenix. You sure about that? I'm not sure. Maybe, maybe, you know, maybe you're just, you know, maybe you're just a little crazy or something. Maybe I'm crazy. She must know I'm Juan... Uh, she must know Juan was killed, or whatever the fuck. I, I didn't even read it. I just looked at it. I didn't even try to read it. I'll admit to that. So what about, um, you know anything about Lada? I highly doubt you know anything about Lada, but... Yeah, okay. Know anything about the camera? Alright, just wanted to make sure, because she probably could have been the one to steal the camera. Now tell me... Tell me about this article. Really? You don't care about the article? You don't... Huh? Okay. Alright. Well... Well, I guess... I guess I don't have any anything else for you. Oh, motive for murder. There we go. Do you have any ideas? As to? As to why Mr. Juan was murdered? Why would you ask me about such a thing? 
I'm just gonna do my job so you don't have any ideas. Oh! You're a liar! Oh, another four lock. Miss Andrews. Sorry, but there's nothing more I have to add to this conversation. Oh yeah, you sure about that? Huh. It's a psychic lock, Mr. Nick. Yep. That's getting to be more and more... I'm having like a hiccup. There's going to be more and more of these lately. Alright. Well, I think I have, since there's nothing else I can really do at this point in time. Actually, you know what? No. I'll be back. I'll be back with you, Adrian. Just have to check something real quick. I really hate that I have to go to certain locations just to head to another location. Just make them all there. Just put them all in one fucking... Just put them all in one thing. Detective Gumshoes said there. They had an investigation briefing. Ugh. Yeah. Oh, he's back. Hey, so you came, pal. Why the why the blunt greeting? Um, because there's nothing to be friendly or happy about. What do you mean by that? Well, things look perfect this time around. The evidence and the testimony are all airtight. But we can't just roll over and die. We have to stay positive. Listen. Phoenix, I understand that you don't like that you don't like Francesca, but I honestly think I honestly think if you were to just tell her what's going on, she would she would understand. I know she hates your guts, but listen, she doesn't hate Maya. I don't think she hates Maya. She doesn't she's not a bad person, right? She's just an asshole. <laughs> so what do you mean that what do you mean the evidence airtight? I can't give you all the details, pal, but there's two big pieces. Two? And both of them are in this photo. So what am I missing here? The first is the button that's missing from the victims. Well I didn't miss that. There's definitely something else that I'm missing. The button. Is the second one the wine glass, or they're just gonna say the wine glass? Cause that's pretty suspicious as fuck. The button was found during the body search, Mr. On Guard. Yep. Found in the folds of Nickel Samurai's special pants. Um, and the second one is the knife in his chest. The fingerprints on the knife in his chest to be exact. Fingerprints? Huh, whose are they? You didn't have to ask, little missy. It's obvious. They're mad on guards. Tomorrow's trial will talk about being stuck between a rock and a hard place. Just talk about being stuck between a hard and a rock place. <laughs> For some reason I wanted to say it. So what about the airtight testimony? It's the old security lady, Miss Lulbag. I thought so. What do you mean you thought so? Did she tell you something, pal? Well... And I even told her not to open the mouth of hers and blab to anyone. Her blab knob is stuck on tin. There's no turning it down, trust me. Yeah, well, Miss Old Bag saw it all. She saw it all, pal. She saw Mr. Erngard come out of the victim's room around the estimated time of death. No way. Aw, oh, shit. What about, uh... Do you anything about the tabloids? We're pretty interested in this bit of gossip ourselves. The scandal with Miss... Uh, with Miss. Why do I keep saying Miss? <laughs> the scandal with Juan? But why? Oh no, Juan. But why? Well, two years ago, a woman, a woman, commuted to- Oh my god. My brain didn't register the picture until he said it, and I went, yeah, she was hanging. Suicide. Her name was Celeste Impax. And she was Juan's manager. The victim's manager? But that's not all, pal. Miss Impax was- was Miss, uh- was Miss, oh god, why can't I say fucking Adrian? Why can't I say the name? Was Miss Adrian Andrews' mentor? She taught Miss Andrews everything she knew about the business from square one. Her mentor? A woman. A woman who was both Mr. Juan's manager and Mrs. Juan's manager. I don't know why I'm doing that. I, I just felt like being stupid for a moment. Could her suicide have something to do with the case? Do you want to know more about her, pal? Yeah, yeah, I do. I would like to. I think that would help out. She was the victim's manager and was also Miss Adrian Andrews' mentor. 
It's been two years since her suicide, and now the two are linked together, or linked again by another death. Or maybe it's just a- oh shit! Oh my god, Francesca, what are you doing here? <laughs> what are you doing here? I don't know why I'm- I'm having such a good time just doing that stupid fucking, <laughs> you know, <laughs> just doing that stupid little accent. I don't know why. I'm gonna stuck on dealing with one foolish idiot after another. Miss Von Karma, you can't seem to stop allying yourself with the enemy, can you? I don't need a traitor in my midst. You don't, you don't mean, I do. Scruffy, you have 30 minutes to get out of here. You are no longer needed. Goodbye. That's, wait, 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 please, sir. If I don't get this month's pay, I'll start, quiet. If you weren't, if, if it weren't for you traitors, I would have won. Is that what you're going to say? Oh, 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 who said that? Who? who? That voice. Edgeworth! It's been a long time. It's been a long road without you, my friend. And I'll tell you all about it when I see you again. Hey, Edgeworth. How's it going, buddy? It's been a long time, right? This... this person? This is Mr. Edgeworth? What am I gonna do with you? Still blamoring others... still blaming others when things go wrong. You haven't changed a bit, Francesca. You... you... How dare you show your face to me without a shred of shame upon it. You soiled the Von Karma name, dragged it through the mud. You even ran away with your tail between your legs like the ill-breed dog you are. Are you talking about the Von Karma family creed? To be perfect in every way? Then let's hear it, Francesca. How are things going? I heard you are having a rough time maintaining perfection in this country. You. You seem to be getting crushed under the weight of it all. That's why I came back. Keep your assumptions to yourself. I haven't given in yet. I won't lose. This case is mine. I'll never hand it over to you. Never. Mr. Phoenix Wright. I will see you tomorrow in court. It will be a client it'll be a clinical lesson on the means of total victory. Huh. So the same wild mare she always was. I, hi, Edgeworth. <laughs> I thought you. The prosecutor Miles Edward had gone and died. Mr. Nick. I I never wanted to see you again. I think that's enough of warm welcomes for someone who haven't seen in the year. Are you gonna run tomorrow's trial? You heard her right. That wild mare hasn't given in yet, it seems. So no, I don't think I'll be making an, an appearance. You hated me for quite Wait, your hatred for me is quite unhealthy, not to mention one-sided. But I will say one thing. You can't win on your own at the trial tomorrow. What's that supposed to mean? I have something definitive that you lack. And working together is the definition of teamwork. It's the power to find the truth. The truth. In order to understand this case, you have to understand a certain truth. Well... If you ever feel like need for my assistance, it is available to you. I'm not in charge of this case, so I can be a bit more generous with information. Just what's going on inside his head. He came back as punished Edgeworth. A lot of things may have happened, however, Manfred Von Karma was still my mentor. And a perfect win record is proof of Von Karma. One year ago, you could not establish guilt in the few cases. A few cases. Almost like every one of them. And those losses, the reason you suddenly disappeared from the prosecutor's office? Did you leave because you had lost your perfect win record? To think your motivation for prosecuting trials was so selfish. It's been better for everyone if you never came back from the dead, Edward. God damn it. God damn it, Phoenix. Chill. I see. Then let me ask you something. Why do you stand in the courtroom? What is your reason? I fight. I fight for the justice of others. I don't know why I'm talking like this. 
Well, with Francesca, she's almost always says, I will defeat you this time, the instant she sees me. But, the courtroom is not a personal battlefield for prosecutors and lawyers. I stand in the courtroom to defend my client, to save their lives. To save your client, you say. Those who think only of their own ego-driven goals. Those kind of prosecutors are, reprehen are reprehensible to me. Even if you are a prodigy. Or someone like you, Edgeworth. It looks like there's still a lot you have yet to learn. A lot I have yet to learn. Me? Hmm. Well, that's enough for now. The time, the time when we will see is coming soon. Huh. Okay. Look at this smug-ass motherfucker. <laughs> hmm. I guess that... Huh. Did I get... Did I get anything from this? I don't think I got anything from this. I guess I just got chewed out. Huh. Oh. Well, nice to see you again, Edgeworth. Now I'm going to go head back to Adrian. And actually, hold up. I highly doubt. I highly doubt. We got Edgeworth from this. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That is worth everything. But I just want to see. Oh. See, I, I thought... I thought Edgeworth would just be like, Hey, what, where's Maya? <laughs> and who's the child? <laughs> what, about, what about Gumshoe? I just want you to talk. I just want you to talk, Edgeworth. Aw, oh, damn it. Okay. Alright, Edgeworth. Good seeing you again. You, you fucking you son of a bitch. Alright. Now back to, uh... <clears throat> oh, what the hell's going on? Um, looks like Miss Andrews isn't here. That's not good. I still have a few questions I, I wanted to ask her. And she had the psychic lock on her heart, right? Well, we don't have much of a choice. I guess we'll have to come back later. From doing what? From doing what? What am I supposed to do? I thought maybe she would be hiding out in here. All right. Hmm. Let's see, what... What else do I need to do? Well, oh, Edgeworth is... Oh! Uh, I assume you would know about her. Come on, you work in the showbiz. Ah, damn it. Maybe Lada knows something. Highly doubt it, but... If Lada doesn't know... Okay. If Lada doesn't know, then I'm gonna head to Max. Max. Matt. Fuck. Max. Why the fuck do I keep calling him Max? I call him Max because we're dealing... We're dealing with Matt, and our last fucking client was Max. Or Billy Bob, as his real name. How the fuck? It really confuses me that I gotta go through all these places just to get to one place. You! Tell me about this. You know something. Um, what's wrong? How much do you know? What? What do you mean, how much? Mr. Lawyer. I may be your client, but... I hope you will keep yourself out of my personal life. Uh... No worries. I would never. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a lunch appointment I had to- Lunch where? Yeah, you're in detention! Who in the world's gonna- Son of a bitch. Adrian did not. Mr. Nick? This Celeste impacts, lady. Somehow I get the feeling she's a very important person in all this. Either Von and Karma or Adrian. Somebody. Somebody must have yanked his little chain. Damn it. Fucking lunch appointment. Huh. Maybe she's back in the room now? I highly doubt, but... No. Why did I go to this room? Nope. 
Huh. Who else would have... We got Celeste from that, deceased. And Edgeworth. We literally got Edgeworth. <laughs> huh. Maybe I can ask Edgeworth about Celeste? He might know something. He did say he have a... I'm fucking singing Material Girl in my head again, goddammit. There's a living in a material world. I am material girl. Alright. Why the fuck? I'm running in circles, goddammit. This shit confuses me. Uh, criminal affairs. You still here, Edgeworth? Damn right, look at you. Tell me. You know anything? Hmm. That woman's another key to solving this case. Do you really think so? She was Adrian Andrews' mentor a long time ago, but she was suddenly called away by a different show and became Juan's manager. And then, a few months ago, Celeste Impact died. Impacts, or whatever. But her death was ruled as suicide, right? Yeah. But there's still one riddle we have yet to solve. A riddle? Her suicide note. It went missing. No one could find it. A suicide note that just vanished? Huh. Tell me about yourself. Alright, shit. Well, that's new. I don't think there's... Huh. Anything you can tell me about the murder photo? Nope. Yeah, I assume so. <laughs> like Edward's theme music? It's very... It's very, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, damn, what, what is the word I'm looking for? Damn it! <laughs> like, I want to say, like, something that's, like, very, um, I guess for lack of better term, kingly? I don't know. You know, like, he's a, like, he's a regent or something? He's like, I'm the king! This is my beautiful song. Damn it. I don't... Can you tell me about her? Because she's the... Alright. So maybe you can tell me about, you know, the witness. Alright, I think that... Okay. I keep forgetting that once I show them evidence, it opens a dialogue thing. Regional. See, that's... In my, like... This is one of those things where I, I, I fucking hate English. Because, like... In my mind, I wanted to say regional, but in my head, it's like, wait, when you say regional, you're talking about, you know, a location. <laughs> but yeah, you're right, regional. You know, it's a one of those weird homophones or whatever the fuck they're called. This impasse death was most certainly a suicide. Of that, there's no mistake. However, we could not find her suicide note. And that's when the police began to suspect that someone had hidden it. The suicide note? But how do you... How, I did that without realizing that. <laughs> I put the little accent in there. But how do you... <laughs> how do you know Miss Impass had even written such a note? There was no solid evidence, however. We did find traces of ink on her right index finger, which makes likelihood of a suicide note very high. But who would hide such a thing? The police thinks it was Mr. Juan himself. Then the victim. He was the one who found her body? Which makes them the only person who was, uh, who, eh. which makes him the only person who had a chance to hide the suicide note. Mr. Juan hid his own manager's suicide note, but why? But why? Why would Juan do that? As long as her note is missing, any speculation beyond this is meaningless. For now, I think you should look this over. This is the suicide report, part one, anyways. Part one. What about part two? I'm, I'm clicking to look at it. Oh. Come on. Come on now. Why can't I look at it? Deceased. Found. Her note was hidden. Okay, why Why can I... I can't check it? Huh. That's cool. I don't like it. I don't like... Oh, wow. I don't like to look through reports. I like suicide reports even less. Worst of all, they're reports that have multiple parts like this one. This has two. Two parts. What you just handed me is the first... <laughs> what what I just handed you, and then you handed me back. <laughs> what the fuck? 
what you just handed me is the first part of the report. Here's the second part. The second part of the report is about the attempted suicide. The attempt- what? The attempter's name? Oh, God! They had a suicide pact or something? What the hell? <laughs> she tried to kill herself? But why? Why would she kill herself? She's so beautiful. She doesn't seem like the kind of person to try and kill herself, though. You think she's a strong career woman? That's just what she wants you to think. Adrian Andrews. She has a certain secret she always trying to hide. A secret? Her, depend her dependent nature. That's what she really is like in the inside. Huh. So she's like... Uh, for lack of a better term, like a lap dog. Like she just, she needs someone to work for. Miss Andrews dependent. Talk about the exact opposite of what that woman is. Hmm. Well, thanks for that, Miles. Where's the second part? Are you not handing me the second part? Is it just, does it just automatically update her thing? Why, why aren't you? Why did it go up here? Why didn't they just add another one? <laughs> What's this about Miss Andrews having a dependent nature? Adrian Andrews' attempt at suicide was a few days after the death of Celeste Impacts. Hmm. Now why did Adrian Andrews think about committing suicide? Because she had apparently lost her will to live. Don't give me that fucking... That fucking Princess Amidala shit. I lost the will to live. I had two children. But without Anakin around, I guess I'll just die now. Lost her will? How could this be? Her pillar of strength, her, her mentor Celeste Impasse, was gone forever. That's why. I keep saying impasse, but you know what I mean, impact. Why would that... Well, why? Why would she do that? This is what they called following someone to the grave? After her attempted suicide, Adrian Andrews started attending counseling sessions. She's in, she is someone who needs a person in whom she can trust absolutely. And once she finds that person, she'll do anything she can to keep them near. Without such an anchor in her life, the crippling anxiety strives her ability to live. And that's... that's the nature of her dependency on others? When Celeste Impact suddenly committed suicide, the world before her turned pitch dark. And that's according to Adrian Andrew herself. Then that means her super confident attitude. It's all a facade. She only is copying her mentor's behavior to hold herself together. Oh shit. Attempted suicide report. Damn. Can I take a look at that one then? Nope, they're just there. Huh. Huh. Guess guess it's time for me to talk to her. Oh man, I'm gonna have to am I gonna have to talk to her and bring up her suicide? It's kinda it's kinda difficult, man. But why? Why would she kill yourself? Or so beautiful. Oh, Miss Andrews is here. But it looks like she's talking with someone. That's Francesca Von Ah shit. It's fun karma. What are you doing here? Oh well, you see. I, I'm his lawyer, so you got some nerve following me around. I mean, can you blame me? You're you're so beautiful. Why would I follow you around? Following you around? That's you, Miss Von Karma. You're the one doing the following. Pearls. You're always following after that Mr. Detective with the little beard. Me? Following after Scruffy? Don't make me laugh. Let me show you something interesting, little girl. Are you summoning him? What's that? An electromagnetic receiver. I planted a tracking device on that detective. Why? And with this, I know the fool's every move. So that noise we heard was this receiver? I feel really sorry for poor detective. Sorry, why did I have a lisp? I feel really sorry for Detective Gumshoe now. Now then, let's stop wasting time. Adrian Andrews. Yes? Think hard about what we just discussed. Think hard about what we just discussed, understood? Uh, Alright. What were those two talking about? 
Miss Andrews? She seems a little dazed, doesn't she? Ugh, damn it. I I can't bring myself I cannot bring myself to hate Francesca. I love her too much. She's she's just great. <laughs> I love everything about her. Alright. Ah shit. Let's tread on some thin ice here, okay? You know what? Let let's not. Let, let let let's just let's just go for the home run. I really hope I don't break her down. I really I'm really not trying to <laughs> ruin her mental state. Why was Juan murdered? If you ask me, I think you know the reason he was killed. Hmm. Why are you hiding things? Don't you realize you're putting Miss Mr. Angar's life in danger by your actions? Why do you why do you ask questions? Which I have no answers. The truth is, I was not that close to Mr. Huang. You were not that close. That's right. We never been on we never been good at being intimate with another person. What? You're not good on being intimate with another person. Somehow I highly doubt that. I'm sorry. Huh. Really? I mean, she would, uh, I guess intimate wouldn't be the word. Uh. Well then, I guess I'll just show you the tabloid. You and Mr. Juan had an intimate relationship, did you not? A silly third-rate tabloid article? If you even had half your wits about you, you wouldn't believe such rubbish. Well, it seems quite a few people have already brought into the story. As you expected, in a world filled with crooks and liars, not to sell, stand her good side. In any case, I despise interpersonal relationships like that. I see. However, what if there was a need for you to get close to someone? Me? Need to get close to Mr. Juan? As if there was ever such a need. Did you get close to Mr. Juan for this person's sake? Uh, there you go. Really? Okay. Well then, there's only only one other choice. Celeste Impacts, your mentor. How do you know about Celeste? She committed suicide, didn't she? But it looks like no one knows why. Right before her death, she was Juan's manager. So I believe you got close to Miss, uh, Miss, I keep saying Miss, to Mr. Juan so you could find out more about her suicide. You have a good imagination. You may have a future yet as a slimy muck, muckraker. Wow, really? Come on. For a, <clears throat> for a future third-rate tabloid. Miss Andrews? There's no mystery surrounding her death. None. It would be pointless for me to force myself into a relationship for nothing. Is that really true? There's really no mystery at all. I don't believe you were completely at ease with the way her suicide was resolved. Because... You too try to commit suicide. But why? You're so beautiful. Get a hold of yourself. Huh? If you want evidence on what? If you want advice on doing yourself in, I suggest asking someone like the police. Which translates to go take a long walk off a short pillar. There's no mystery surrounding her death, none. Be pointless. What? I don't believe you were completely at ease with her suicide. What? I mean, of course, that took a lot. I'm trying on thin ice here. She's gonna beat me up. Huh. Don't believe you were completely at ease with the way her suicide was resolved. I don't... Okay, the suicide note. Alright. Cool. Uh, her suicide note was never found, was it? It looks like the police were under the suspicion that someone had hit it. Like maybe the person who discovered her body? Mr. Juan? Juan? Miss Andrews, I believe you thought the same thing. That's why you became intimate with Mr. Juan. Well, he was the chosen one. 
sat by quietly and listened to your insulting rambles long enough. It's true that Celeste was my mentor, however, allow me to say this again. It had nothing to do with me. I didn't even know that her suicide note was never found. I'm a person who doesn't care about what goes on in their lives of others. That's the impression you'd like to give, however. I don't think that's who you really are. What? What? <laughs> I, want I have evidence that says otherwise. Proof that Celeste impacts with someone very special to you. Okay, well now it's the suicide note. Miss Andrews, you were nearly went through. You nearly went through. Eh, can't read. You nearly went through it with. Eh, fuck! <laughs> went through with what? Ending your life. Miss Andrews, you look and act very strong, like a very strong woman who has it all together. But you don't ask for someone's. For anyone's help, lying on. Eh, bleh, 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 bleh. Fucking kill me. You don't ask. <laughs> You don't ask for anyone's help, relying only on yourself. Yes, I've been very independent ever since I can remember. However, that's all just a lie, a facade. You've always searched out people on whom you can depend on. That's... You were dependent on Miss Impacts, weren't you? Which is why, when she passed away, you lost everything you had. Stop it. When Celeste passed away, so suddenly like that. I died a death on my own, but no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't stop thinking about what had become of her note. You must have heard about the police report. The one si uh, the one that said the police suspected Mr. Juan of hiding Mrs. Impact's note. You heard about it and thought to recover it from him by getting close, am I right? If that's the case, then everything changes. What do you mean? What topic did... What topic did we start this conversation on again? It was why was the victim killed? We got a motive. Exactly. Somehow, Miss Andrews, it seems that you have become the one with the reason who want Mr. Juan dead. Me? Miss Impacts was everything to you. And then she died. And you would do anything to find out why she was killed. Or why she killed herself. <laughs> Even commit murder. Murder? I almost died. <laughs> she almost killed me. Get my health back, goddammit. Alright, motive for murder. It's true. I'm a woman who can only lie, who can only live in insecurity. I'm physically small. I don't have she doesn't seem small to me. Do we have does it say I highly doubt. <laughs> it doesn't say their height or anything. She's twenty three. She didn't look small to me. You know? Maya looks smaller than her. I'm physically small and I don't really have a lot of self-confidence. I push against against all that, though I try to live strongly. I never wanted anyone to find out the truth. Miss Andrews. This one thing is the one thing I wanted to take with me to the grave. It was my secret. Mine and mine alone. I'm sorry. You probably think I'm a worthless human being, right? <laughs> nah, it's cool. Miss Andrews, all I wanted to know was the truth. After Celeste passed away, I've heard that someone had hidden her suicide note, and that someone was Juan. Celeste. About her. About her, I became scared. Everything. Everyone seemed like they were out to get me. So you could close- So you got close to Mr. Juan to recover her suicide note. Looked like the tabloid reported the truth after all. Ironic, isn't it? Well, like I said, uh, where there's smoke, there's fire. And if they purposely add a fuel to the fire, they keep the celebrity world burning. But as for the suicide note, I didn't, and I wouldn't kill anyone for it. It just doesn't suit me, that's all. Well, that's enough for now. I still have to work to do so. I understand. Oh, I have one small favor to ask. My attempted suicide. I'd like for you to keep it as a secret. Miss Andrews, if people found out about my weakness, I would be soon. I would sooner choose to die than live. D damn! All right, fine, cool. Secret safe with me. This is great. I guess she's overthinking type, huh? She probably never says anything without carefully thinking it through first. Thank you for your dis for your discretion. It's cool, Mr. Nick. Can I ask you something? What is it? 
Miss Andrews has been playing with her card in her hand since a little while back. That card? Yeah, I guess. Miss Andrews, what's the card you're holding? Huh? Oh, this? I don't quite know. It just suddenly appeared in my handbag. Eh, looks like a seashell. That's what it looks like, doesn't it? I honestly don't remember owning this card. I wonder where I picked it up from. Her not remembering something clearly, it sounds like it would be a rare occurrence. Well, I must be off. I leave Mr. Unguarding your capable hands. Did she leave the card behind with her? No, I assume not. <laughs> well, seems like we have everything that we need. Well, I think we gathered all we can. What about Mystic Maya? Is she alright? Oh, Pearls. Don't look so, uh, uh, she looks so worn out by this. She hasn't slept at all, and has been walking all over the place with me today. What's wrong, Mr. Nick? Let's go back to the office for a little while. You're really tired, alright? <clears throat> oh no. I'm okay, really. I'm fine. I really am. You don't look fine to me. Let's get back to the office. For some reason, I, I had to think about... I had to plan my route outside of this fucking hellhole. It's a maze. So, what now? Well, we did find one thing out for sure. Miss Andrews has a motive. I mean, Miss Impact suicide note? That's right. She was also the one to discover the victim's body. Cle uh, body. Clever. Clever. Ah, Mr. Nick, the transceiver. Hello? Right in Cole Law Offices. Mr. Attorney, you're not answering a phone. But Maya! Where's Maya? As I promised, I have not gone with a few feet of her this whole time. Really? For like the whole day? Which is why I suppose she's absolutely famished. What? what So I suggest you win a quick acquittal for my friend. At any cause, wouldn't you agree? Wait, Maya? Let me hear her. Very well. Maya, is that you? Sis, ask my sis. What? Damn it! You cut me off. Mystic Maya said, ask my sis, didn't she? Sis? What the hell does she mean by that? Come on, Phoenix. You're so hopeless on this one. Sorry. Oh, hey, Mia, how's it going? I have a message from Maya, so come ask me. <clears throat> so come, ask me anything you want about her. Alright. Time to get to the meat of the situation here. How's Maya? She's safe, for now. That kidnapper, that kidnapper is wanted to keep his words, it seems. I'm glad to hear she's safe. But Mia, how did you know? As soon as she was locked, Maya called for me. I read the note she left. Then I got... A, you read the note she left. I thought she would be like tied up or something. Huh. Where did she get a pen? <laughs> Where did she get paper? <laughs> then I gathered as much information about her surroundings as I could. And I didn't know you could use that spirit channeling thing like that. Pretty smart of her. Yeah. It's really convenient, huh? You know, talking with the dead is really convenient. I love, I love how Mia just, like, real talk, I've been joking about it all night, but Mia just really pulled Jedi trick. She said, you strike me down, I'll be with you always. I'll be stronger than you ever know. The kidnapper, what's he like? I don't know. Apparently, Maya wanted to answer, answer a phone call at the hotel and was dragged there. And? She didn't see the face of her attacker. Maya's locked up in a very dark place right now. I'll tell you everything I heard when I saw, when I was with her. When you were with her. Was she was she kidnapped by, by Mysterio? <laughs> I'm starving. I can really go for some apple pie. I want me some of that apple apple pie. I mean, at a time like this, sweets are the only way to go. I have to stay positive. He promised he was gonna kill oh, wait, he promised he wasn't gonna kill me. I'm not gonna die. <laughs> she has hella white. <laughs> But she's 18. <laughs> she's still a minor. I mean, 
I mean, if she, I mean, but is it, is it wine? Like, isn't alcohol just empty calories? So it wouldn't really help her. It would just make her have to go to the bathroom. I wonder if you're with Nick right now. Hmm. Hasn't stopped me. Yeah, you're right. It hasn't stopped me either. <laughs> All right. Well, examine. Oh, wait, there's the note. Huh? Someone... Whoa, seashell. Kind of looks like a business card, but there's n there's no name on it. Hmm. It's a picture of a seashell, I think. What a strange card. See, I would, you know, one would assume that Adrian locked her up, but I highly doubt it. I don't think Adrian would go that far. What's this? Feels like... Well, she's, she's... Eh, she might go that far, but she doesn't... I don't know. I don't get a hunch from it. <laughs> Water. Water weight would still take the... Oh, yeah, you're right. I mean, yeah, you're right. For, for a bit. Probably for about, like, two hours. It feels like there's a... But there's not. But alcohol dehydrates you. Doesn't alcohol dehydrate you? So wouldn't that be a bad idea? <laughs> what the, what's this? It feels like there's a lot of glass bottles here. And these, they feel like barrels. I'll pass. Too bad I'm really hungry and not really thirsty. I'm sorry. Does this say pretzels? <laughs> there's all sorts of things piled up here, but it's too dark to see. Does that say pretzels? Is she in a fucking room with pretzels? Talking about she's hungry? <laughs> she could eat the cardboard? Uh, maybe. Drat, it's locked. Hmm. But the door lock seems easy enough to open. On TV, the hero always uses a plastic card for stuff. Oh. Then click. Imagine. There's some doors like that at my job. Like, there's office doors. And the moment everyone leaves, I'm like, open this fucking door. <laughs> so I just take, like, a card and I just swipe it open. I wonder if there's a card like that around here. Ah, that's it. I can use this shit. If I use this, maybe I can open the door. That might be my key out of here. I have a feeling this card might be useful. I'm such a genius. All right. Now if you'll excuse me, Mr. Kidnapper. I did it. Okay. Now I'm getting the hell out of here. I shouldn't keep Nick waiting or worried. What do you mean to be continued? She's like, I'm hungry, but there's a box of pretzels over there. Hmm, I don't know. I realize I did not save for the most part that whole entire time. March 22. All right, we have to get this in one go. Probably impossible, but... Adrian did it. That's what it looks like. Dude, no way. That woman went. That woman couldn't do anything like that. In court today, there'll be a mountain of evidence that will implicate you. A mountain of evidence. I'm certain there's someone out there trying to very hard to pin this whole thing on you. Please, Mr. Lawyer, dude. Like I said yesterday, I'm refreshing like a spring breeze. All right. I can't let any sort of scandal ruin that. I understand. Well, it's almost time. Mia, we must get a complete acquittal today. I know, but I can't focus on my situation right now. Or Pearl's either. No matter what, I have to focus on winning this case by the end of today. Indeed. Well, let's get going. It's him. This is right. Good morning. This is it, Mr. Attorney. The day of the trial. Maya, she's unharmed, right? Well, when I checked on her earlier this morning, she seemed to be a bit, how we say, tired. Don't worry, people don't die that easily. Besides, we really should be concerning, uh, concentrating on is winning today's trial. For my sake as well as yours, you must win today's trial. Which is why I sent you a little present this morning. Present? When in the world would you, would you want to give me? You'll figure it out once the trial starts. And, and even if you don't like my gift, 
I expect to generously I expect you to generously accept it and win the day's contest, if you please. Wait, what? Juan, is this you? Juan, is this you? You son of a bitch? Contest? What the hell are you talking about? Juan? You fake your own death? Mr. Lawyer, dude. Like, who was that? Uh, no one. It has nothing to do with you, so forget you heard anything. Alright. Dude, did your nose just get longer? Fuck you. Fuck you, Matt. How dare you. Alright. The trial is starting, and I am going to use the bathroom, <laughs> but I'll be right back. Give me like three minutes, three, two minutes, about that. It won't be too long, I promise.
we are back. Now, I came back in my room, sat in my chair, then my controller fell and slid all the way across the floor. So I had to get up, <laughs> move my mic out the way. I went, fuck. I hate gravity sometimes. All right. Let me get situated in this chair. So, we're about to start the trial. Before we go into this, usually around this time is probably where I would end the stream, but since we're here, there's no going back. But let it be known that I might have to end the stream in the middle of the trial. I'd rather not, but we're going to do it regardless. Court is now in session for the trial of Matt on guard. Are the prosecution and defense ready? The defense is ready, Your Honor. Um, where's the prosecution? I say, Mr. Wright, what happened to Miss Von Karma? I killed her. I, I don't know, Your Honor. Why are you getting mad at me? Your Honor, please be quiet, Bailiff. Court is in session. If you must tell me something, please keep it brief. Now then, what is it? Prosecutor... Prosecutor Von Karma has... This morning, Miss Von Karma was shot by an un... What? <laughs> shot? Somehow, I think this is the present that the man was talking about. His present? Von Karma is one of the top prosecutors in the country at the moment. If she were to disappear, it would be to your advantage. This is a totally insane. Miss Von Karma? she all right? I don't have the answer. Why are you asking me? She's alive in stable condition. Miles, is that you? That's good. You. You. You're. Why are you on the witness stand? Your Honor. Due to the circumstances, Miss Francesca Von Karma can no, cannot appear in court today. I, Miles Edgeworth, will be taking her place. The prosecution is ready, naturally. Edgeworth, this is not how I wanted to. I wanted this to go down. Miss Von Karma was shot in her right shoulder, and it's currently now she's gonna have a sweet, sexy battle scar. Luckily, I have a lot. I love how everyone's just like, "Man, she was shot," but she's fine now. It's okay. It's like, dude, she was shot. <laughs> I feel bad. She didn't deserve that. Oh my god. Luckily, I have looked in this case over and am familiar with the details. The prosecution seeks to prove the guilt of Mr. Matt Ungard. This court acknowledges the prosecution. Right. I finally found the answer I was struggling for my long lost, <laughs> on my long journey this past year. Oh, notice how they both have bullet wounds in their shoulder? Oh, that's fucked up. <laughs> so what, is it, is, it, is it the Assassin's Creed Desmond family line bullshit? Oh, they got a scar on their fucking lip. By the time, <laughs> that thing is so stupid. It's the family line tree thing. You get a scar on your lip. By the time this case comes to an end, you too will know the answer. Now then, the prosecution would like to call its first witness. Please bring Detective Gumshoe to the witness stand. Listen to this fucking music. Witness, your name and occupation. My name's Dick Gumshoe, sir. I'm a detective down at the precinct for now, until I'm fired. For now? After this trial is over, I'm supposed to turn in my badge, sir. Detective Gumshoe. The prosecution has no need for a depressed witness. <laughs> Lift your head up and face forward like the proud officer, Detective Dick Gumshoe. Yes, sir. Now, let's have your testimony. If you want to explore the various, uh, uh, fat, 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 fuck. Why did I stumble on that word? If you want to explore the various facets of this case, we must start with that. Get ready, Phoenix. This is going to be one very rough fight. Yeah, it would have to be with Edgeworth as my opponent. The answer he was struggling for. Interesting. Show me the answer you finally found, Edgeworth. Bare facts of the case. This murder happened after the Hero of Heroes award ceremony, sir. The victim, Juan, was found dead in his hotel room. After looking to the case of death, we believe he was definitely murdered, sir. 
At first, we thought there was something suspicious about the empty guitar case. However, we later found out that the car guitar case had nothing to do with the murder. Hmm. After the award ceremony ended, the victim was alone in his room. Yes, sir. Both the victim and defendant were alone in their room, sir. I see. Mr. Wright, you may begin your cross-examination. You're damn right I shall. Alright. This murder happened after the Hero of Heroes Awards. I believe that. The victim, Juan, was found dead in his hotel room. After looking to the cause of death, we believe he was definitely murdered. At first, we thought there was something suspicious about the empty guitar case. However, we later found that the guitar case had nothing to do with the murder. What convinced you to had nothing to do with the case? The guitar wasn't at the Gatewater Hotel that night. Well then, well, where was it? The bright red guitar was eventually found at the TV studio. The victim, Juan, had apparently only taken the case with him, sir. So you mean he forgot to put the guitar in the case? Yes, sir. Even when he was on stage for the ceremony, he didn't have his guitar. So that guitar case was empty even before he got to the hotel. Yeah, that's right. So, it really had nothing to do with the case after all. Hmm. Our first order of business should be to gather more information. Yeah, I know, I know. However, setting off traps is part of the lawyer's job too. If you say so. Of course, we're supposed to escape from them too, wouldn't you say? Yep, like Indiana Jones. I believe it happened after the... Well, might as well just press everything, right? Would you please give us a brief timeline of what happened after the ceremony? Okay, pal. The ceremony started at 6 p.m., ended around 8 p.m., and then there was a short break. A special post-ceremony show was supposed to start in the lobby 30 minutes later. And that's when the victim found a uh, body was found, right? Which is to say, the murder occurred during the 30-minute break. Hmm. Please continue your testimony, detectives. Alright. The person who discovered the victim's body was Adrian Andrews, correct? Yeah. Who's this Adrian Andrews you're talking about? She's the defendant, Matt Angard's manager. <clears throat> My voice is getting all raspy. She's a real pretty lady, sir. Sexy lady, who's that lady? And she's pretty, so she's a pretty lady. I wonder if she will grace us with her presence. When the post ceremony show, <laughs> when the post ceremony show was about to start, she went to get Max and guard. After her, Max, I called him Max again. God damn it! After visiting the, I'm just gonna say Matt. I'm gonna stop saying his fucking last name. After visiting the room, she next went to the victim's room to get him from for the show. I see. And that's when she found the victim's body. After looking into the case of death, we believe he was definitely murdered. The case of death. Was that because was that because Juan was stabbed in the chest? Only a careless amateur would believe something so brainless as that, pal. He was poisoned. Take a good look. Now a real pro's attention would be drawn here to the banana. Banana. Bandana. My bad. Wait, he was choked? Oh shit. Hmm. Banana. See, I said it too, Judge! Mmm, his bandana, sir. That's the thing wrapped tightly around his neck. Ah, uh, yes, I see. His banana scented banana. Wait, huh? <laughs> don't don't fuck with me, Judge. Then what about the knife? It seems I've been stuck in the victim's chest on purpose after death. Hmm. We have a crafty murder on our hands. Wait. No. No fucking way. Hold up. He didn't. He didn't commit suicide, did he? It says strangled, but. Hmm. It says strangled, but someone could have found his body and placed him down. Make it look like a murder. Oh shit. At first, we thought there was something suspicious about the empty guitar case. However, we later found out that the guitar case had nothing to do with the murder. What? Didn't I? I'll press that again, but didn't I? Huh, I thought we would have got something out of all that. 
Alright, alright, alright. Huh. So we got... We got a new piece of evidence from that. The autopsy report. 8.15pm. Caught strangled with the scarf, then stabbed with a knife. Hmm. Photo of Juan's man. Victim Juan found dead in the hotel room. After that, suspicious about the target. I don't believe that. Well, first of all, now that we're here, time to do what we do best, save before doing anything. Now, I don't believe that there's water on top of it. Really? Huh. Okay. All right. Hmm. We thought there was something suspicious about the guitar case. However, we later found the guitar had nothing. Wait, I'm sorry. Did I did I press the wrong statement? <laughs> There's no way I pressed the wrong statement. Did I did I press the wrong statement? I mean, not press. Did I present evidence to the wrong statement? Okay, just making sure. Just making sure. It like took me backwards. We thought there was something suspicious about the empty guitar case. After looking into the cause of death, we believe he was definitely murdered. Yes, I believe that. The victim was found dead in this hotel room. The murder happened after. Yeah, that's that's true. There's no contradiction to that. Hmm. No, it has to be the uh found out the guitar case had nothing to do with the murder. That's... no, that's the contradiction. I, that's the one that I definitely feel. So, just gotta look over this shit. Post conference, stage show. Stolen the night of the murder tabloid article, the victim was in this case. Tabloid gossip land. Found next to the victim. It's filled with tomato juice. No sign of it's been drank. Huh. I'm thinking. I'm trying to. I'm trying to piece things together here. These have nothing to do with anything right now. And I highly doubt that anyone has anything to do with anything right now at this moment. Ah, uh, shit. Would you think that? Because it was empty. Jammin' Ninja doesn't go anywhere without his bright red guitar. And we couldn't find it anywhere in the scene of the crime. Did I not press this statement? A fan really wanted the guitar and did the crime. I didn't. I didn't press the statement, did I? <laughs> but. The only fingerprints on the guitar case was the victim's. I didn't press the statement. I'm mad that I, I just skimmed over this, apparently. Only the victim, huh? Hmm, I see. So much for theory, anyways. There's some water on it. On top of the lid, there's fingerprints. I believe that's enough. First, the victim was choked to death with his bandana. Then, after the victim was dead, the killer deliberately stabbed him with a knife. Which brings me to the, my next point. Why did... Why then did the police arrest Matt in guard... On guard... In guard... Uh, Matt. You know what I'm talking about. Because there's no reason enough to suspect him. Here it comes. Looks like Edgeworth's back in his full swing. Very well, Detective Gumshoe. Please testify about this matter. Yes, sir. Matt and guard and Juan were huge rivals with each other. They each thought the other guy was in his way. That motive enough in my book. As for evidence, there's Jammin' Ninja's button. It was ripped off the ninja's costume and was found in Matt's ha Hakama. Hakama. The Defiant's fingerprints were also all over this knife. Oh, that's a golden ass knife. <laughs> the, defendant w the defendant bought the knife for the crime, which makes this a predetermined murder. 
Hmm. So the defendant's fingerprints were found on the knife used for the stabbing. It was sort of sticky on the handle, so the fingerprints came out pretty clearly. Or someone just went and grabbed the knife that he used while he was eating his steak. And the button. It's found in the defendant's clothes, was it? Hmm. This button also covered in blood. Yes. Uh, and we know that the blood, uh, the blood on it is the victim's blood, sir. What? All this points very clearly to the defendant, doesn't it? Yes, it most certainly does, Your Honor. Ready to give in yet, right? You son of a bitch! I'll find the hole in your argument somehow. You can press as hard as you like. Just hurry up with your usual pointless questions. You son of a bitch, how dare you. Alright. I shall press. But in terms of popularity, Mr. Angar won, did he not? Yeah. But you know what's ironic, pal? Bond was always one step behind Mr. Angar in everything. This year it seemed like he finally caught up, ready for the big final showdown. But Mr. Juan lost the Grand Prix in the end. That's too bad. He must have been pretty downhearted after losing. And then he killed himself. <laughs> He's Edgeworth reborn. Still sassy as shit. Wait just one second there. Matt has... Matt has... Uh, wow. Well, Matt was beating Juan in the popularity polls. Well, yeah, I guess, but... Which means that in the defendant's eyes, the victim was not a rival at all. Which means he had no motive to kill him at all. Hmm. Yes, I quite agree. Well, detective? Hmm. It's not... Well... I guess when you put it like that, then yeah, the defendant would have no motive. Detective, I'm beginning to see why you were fired. Oh, no, not you too, Mr. Hatchworth, please. I look forward to your pension no <laughs> your pension negotiations. Oh my god. No! Now, now, Detective, let's continue with the testimony. No, not my poor pension too. Detective, if you value your money, I suggest you proceed. Y yes, sir. We can talk about my pension later, sir. What about... What was that about? Hello? Phoenix said, uh, hello? What's going on? As for evidence, there's Jam and Ninja's button. Do you have any proof that the button belonged to the victim? Uh, what do you mean? Oh. Uh, let me put it this way. I'm asking if you have any evidence to go... To back up your claim that... This button was ripped off the Jam and Ninja's costume. Um, but can't you tell just by looking at it? And the victim's blood is on it. Anyone could have smeared the blood on there afterwards. M Mr. Edgeworth, help me! Alright, I knew it had to be this piece of evidence. Now reel this one in. Thread. Huh? The button was attached to the costume by thread, obviously. And the thread snapped when the button was torn off. If you match up the ends of the thread on the costume with the thread on the button, it's a perfect match. Yeah, that's it. They're a perfect match, pal. Ah, shit. And that's worth for you. Never misses a beat. Not you too, Mia. You're supposed to back me up here. It was ripped off the ninja's costume and it was found in Matt's Hakama. When, when was this button found? Pretty soon after the body was found, we rounded up everyone who knew Juan. And then we decided, and we did a search on the mall. That's when we found the button. Hmm. So it was almost immediately after the murder. The police didn't have the free time to lollygag and play tricks, unlike some people. Hey, what the hell is that supposed to mean? The defendant's fingerprints were all over the knife. How were the fingerprints arranged on the knife? Uh, what do you mean? By examining the fingerprints, you can determine how the defendant held the knife. For example, he didn't hold. <clears throat> Did he hold it normally or overhead? Oh, is that what you meant? Well, we didn't actually think of that. I can't believe the blumbling, the bumbling of this department. Hopeless, you're paying attention to, you're paying attention to the testimony. Wow. Hopeless, 
Were you paying attention to the testimony? Right? The defendant's fingerprints were all over the knife. There's one way to determine how the knife was held at the moment of murder. Hmm. So is the defendant the owner of the knife then? The defendant brought the knife to the crime, which makes this predetermined murder. There's no way this was a predetermined murder, even if he bought the knife. Sorry, pal. This isn't some pocket knife. It doesn't fold. It's not great for walking around with either. Well, that's not good. If the prosecution can prove it was predetermined murdered, we're done for. Phoenix? Yes. There's something very interesting about what the detective said just now. Think carefully before it's too late. A button covered with the victim's blood and a knife and a knife with his fingerprints. Be grateful. If the judge were more rash, he would have already pounded his gravel. Gravel? 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 Gavel. We're still in the world of trouble. Well, before any battle, you must find your enemy's weakness. So let's find the weakness in this testimony, no matter how small it may be. Okay, Phoenix? Hmm. Alright. Huge rivals. That's true. You just thought the other guy was in his way. As for the evidence, there's the button. It was ripped off the ninja. The defendant's fingerprint was also all over. Ugh, that was a yawn. My bad. The defendant bought the knife for the crime, which makes a predetermined murder. Okay, so that. I, I feel like this is the one. Here's the victim's blood engraved. It's gripped. Gate water is engraved. What? With that, that would prove that he didn't buy the knife, he just got it from the hotel. Just, just gotta, gotta make sure, you know? <laughs> gotta make sure. Yeah. Yeah, he was eating dinner with the knife. Wait a second. What? So the basis of your argument is that it was predetermined murder is simple is simply that? My client bought the knife beforehand? That's right, pal. The defendant did not buy this knife. Huh? Take a good look at the handle of the knife, and you'll see what I'm talking about. Huh? It has Gatewater's seal set in its handle. Gatewater? I think I've heard that name somewhere before. That's the name of the hotel, the Gatewater Hotel. Oh. <laughs> I love how sad he is. He's like, uh-oh. <laughs> He's like, oh shit. The murder knife was actually prop property of the hotel, which means this murder was not premeditated. Yes, that's very true. This is very big. Hmm. What is it, Mr. Edgeworth? I'm sorry, but the defense is simply too careless. What? I think whether the crime was predetermined or not has already been determined. What the fuck is this music? <laughs> How so? I admitted this knife is hotel property. There's no one currently on the police force that's this dumb enough not to realize this. But I didn't know. Oh. Because <laughs> you're not on the police force, you're fired. Oh man. The question is, where did this knife come from? Why, that's obvious. It came from the victim, Mr. Juan's room. No, 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 no. Sorry, Your Honor. But that's where you're incorrect. The victim at, uh, the victim ate a last meal before he was murdered with the... Eh. With that being the case, I would like to draw the court's attention to what's on top of the table. There's the knife and fork on the table. Then, where in the world did this knife come from? If it pleases the court, I would like for us to recall the room of the defendant, Mr. Matt et Matt. Bleh. Whatever. <laughs> Especially what's on the top of his table. There's something missing. Perhaps it's a single knife. We investigated the leftover dishes for fingerprints, and while we were investigating, we came to the conclusion that Mr. Matt Engard's knife was missing. 
Mr. Angard had gone to the victim's room with the knife he had used during dinner. Why would he carry a knife on a visit? To kill, of course. I don't know, maybe he was like, dude, you see these golden knives? They're cool as fuck. I would do that. Like, oh, this golden knife. It's like something out of Call of Duty. And with that, <laughs> and with that, I believe that the prosecution has proven this was a premedi premeditated murder. Fuck you, Edgeworth. Amazing, Mr. Edgeworth. Absolutely brilliant. Brilliant, clear deduction. It seems like Edgeworth had this plan from the very beginning. This must be one of those traps, and I just walked headlong into it. Murder weapon with fingerprints and a button from the victim's costume. This is quite a sizable amount of evidence here. I can safely say that there's further deliberate uh, deliberations is a waste of your is a waste of your honor's time. Although, I wouldn't mind if the defense were to present evidence not yet shown to the court. Evidence not yet shown. It means the evidence that the court hasn't seen. In other words, new evidence. What does the defense have to say about this, Mr. Wright? Well, uh, Phoenix? The judge is favoring the prosecution right now. If we answer with something wrong here, the gavel will... Oh, damn it! Why you guys hate me so much? Mr. Wright, do you have something important? Yeah, I do. There's no... There's one. One piece of evidence that catches my attention. Something that this court has yet to see, Mr. Wright. I will say this one more time. I do not feel that this trial needs to continue at all. However, I am giving you one chance. And only one. Yeah, we'll, we'll see about that one chance, you son of a bitch. What the judge is saying, right? So, uh, so don't try pulling one out of your usual bluffs here. If I mess this up, it's curtain call. Oh, shit. I got this. Now then. What's this important evidence? There's two things that come to mind. One, my bad. One, one is the murder raps, not murder, the suicide raps. But I highly doubt that. I highly doubt that. Because Miles knows about this. And this one, no one seems to know what the hell is going on with this camera. Tabloid article about the victim. No one knows about this. I don't want to bring up her suicide. Alright. So I'm gonna go with this. I feel safe. Oh, I fucking hate all of you. Sorry, right? This time, your bluff steers you wrong. Or does it? Use my time powers. Just like that, nothing ever happened. All right, suicide cases. Here it goes. Damn it. What the hell? What's he on about? Is this? Is this another one of those? Is this another one of those fucking? No, no way. They wouldn't do this. They wouldn't do this. They wouldn't do that. I don't think they would. This has to be another trap. Better if I don't say anything, risk throwing out bad evidence. Hmm. Looks like the defendant isn't saying a peep at this one, which means this court is adjourned. Phoenix, we'll lose this case if you give up here, so you had better show the judge something quick. Slow down, we all know I have a tendency to be wrong more than... I can't even say it. There's one. Okay, so, okay. <laughs> so I do have evidence. Alright, cool. Ah, oh, shit. Something that the court hasn't seen before. Huh. Are they really doing a play on words here? Because nobody seems to post ceremony. Nobody's seen it. I really hope they're not doing a play on words here. Article from the tabloid Gossip Land. Superstar Ultra Hot uh, Scandal. Rubble Sources. A beautiful manager. Okay. No, huh? Really? There's a lot of ways this can go. 
I feel like it's something stupidly obvious. We've seen the badge, seen that. We know that. I'm pretty sure that won't help. Murder scene. That's fine. There's some water, but only on top of the lid. Here's his fingerprints. We've seen that. Crime scene. Article doesn't help. This doesn't help. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I didn't think so. Huh. I'm really at a loss for this one. Do you have something important and necessary to present to the court? There's one. Mr. Wright? You may now present one and only one piece of evidence. Now then, what is this important evidence that you must show to the court? I don't fucking... I don't fucking know. I'll be honest with you. I'll be so honest with you. It's the tomato juice. It has zero signs of being drunk. Ha! Ah. Oh my fucking... Okay. Alright. Okay. That's fine. This is a wine glass, is it not? Please look at the photo of the crime scene one more time. See, in my mind, it, you know what? I can't even blame the game for this. It's just me in my mind when they say, show us something that we haven't seen before. But we already showed them the, uh, we already showed them the crime scene, so I would have thought that, you know, that would count. That would count, because it's in the photo. But whatever. Please look at the please look at this photo, the crime scene, once more one more time. Can't even speak. The scene is a mess because of the victim's struggle against the assailant. The vase was broken. His his mess up is all over the floor. Mess up. His makeup. Mess up. <laughs> uh, they were all things that were wow. These are all things that were at one point sitting on top of the dresser. Hmm. Well, yes, I see your point. However, this glass. This is sitting on top of the dresser. It's mysteriously untouched. The only thing that had not fallen over, along with everything else, is this wine glass. This piece of evidence is more than strange enough to warrant further contradictions. Well, what do you all have to say? Uh, well, yes. It is a little peculiar. Yes, isn't it? I thought it was. You can't stop looking at me with those puppy dog's eyes of yours now. <laughs> Come on. Mr. Edgeworth? What is it, Your Honor? Your opinion? You don't need my opinion. Because there is no special meaning to that glass. What? But what? Why? I don't understand. It's safe to say that the glass was set there after the crime took place. Yeah. That's, th that's the point. But the person who discovered the body... Oh, okay. Well, there you go. I didn't- I didn't know she was the- Did they say she was the one that discovered the body? Didn't they say someone else discovered the body? No, no, she was the one. She was the one. Okay. Uh, she could have easily been so shocked that she sat the glass down without thinking. Hmm, that does sound very plausible, Mr. Wright. Could Miss Andrews really have set the glass down without thinking? It's possible. But there's no way, because she's allergic to tomatoes. If I appear weak here, the trial's over. I can look for my proof later. For now, I should trust my instinct and point out certainty. Just might, just might fall for it. Your, th your thought provoking enough. The defendant would like to challenge, challenge. They would like to challenge the prosecution's theory. Why the fuck did I say it like that? We would like to see if some. Wow, I started doing that unconsciously now. We would like to see... I'm, I'm just fucking it up now. We would like to see something that... That pri that, prives, that proves it was in... <sighs> that proves it was Miss Andrews who set the cup up on the table. I hate myself. You turn the situation on, on its head yet again, as usual. Mr. Edgeworth, do you have any proof to back you up? There is no way he can... There's no way he has any. 
He's just bluffing. Unlike Mr. Wright, I never said anything unless I have the evidence to support it. What? Son of a bitch. Hello, these accents. <laughs> yeah, I know. I fuck it. Like, it just, it just came out of me and then I couldn't stop it. Uh, we're not thinking hard enough today, right? Did you think this wine glass escaped my notice? No, not really. Of course it has been thoroughly expected. For fingerprints. Fingerprints? There were... <clears throat> I didn't drink my fucking water. I'm gonna... I'm losing it. I'm losing it. There are only... There are only one set of fingerprints left with this wine glass. Only one. Well, whose were they? They were not the victims or the defendants. Rather, they were one of Aunt, Aunt, mm. Mm. One of Adrian Andrews. What? That's why I said that person who had discovered the body, I left it there. And we're done here, Mr. Wright. Can't believe I fell into another trap. Miss Andrews was probably holding the glass when she went when she went to see Mr. Huang. Mr. Juan Justice. But upon seeing the dead body, she was stunning. She was stunning? She was stunned and set the glass down on the dresser. Hmm. What did you just... What did you just... Uh, what you just said makes a lot of sense. Damn it, I can't read. Now do you see, Mr. Wright? Can't challenge any part of my scenario as it, as it explains everything all too well. Yeah, a little bit too well. I thought long and hard these past years about what it means to be a prosecutor. And from here on out, I'll show you the answer I have come to discover. <clears throat> Wait a second, Mr. Edgeworth. I think the prosecution has proved enough evidence for me to enter my verdict. Unfortunately, I cannot allow you to pass judgment yet. The prosecution has yet another witness. Imagine trying to pull this shit on in actual court. The judge is like, I'm ready for my verdict. And the prosecution goes, no, 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 no. I'm not done. I'm not done talking. Shut up. <laughs> and then they whip him. <laughs> the prosecution... <laughs> The prosecution has yet another witness who would like, uh, we would like the court to hear from. Another witness? Yes. Bailiff, please bring in the next witness. What in the world is Mr. Edgeworth thinking? Oh my god. It's Mysterio. Now then, witness, please state your name and occupation. Witness, your name and occupation. Right, attack, 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 attack. Uh, she has a weapon. Gotcha. I wonder what happened to the calm composure he had earlier. Oh, edgy boy, it's been, what, a year since you last met me? You should be more happy to see me. I saw the report with her testimony, but who knew that under that helmet? It was the wicked witch of the, wit <laughs> of the witness stand. I tell you this time, I know what I'm supposed to do. So today, I'm gonna tell you everything and any, uh, anything and everything. Even, even things that don't have to do with the terrible crime. Miss Witness, the terrible crime is all the court needs to know. Right, tat 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 tat. <laughs> Just, what, what's with everybody bringing like weird weapons into the fucking, into the goddamn court? Even in the first game, you had a kid with like a sword on his back. Shush, I'm talking now, my dear. Edgy wedgy right now. What? <laughs> Don't interrupt us, Gramps. Yes, madam. No, no, please, by all means, interrupt her, please. <clears throat> Anyways, witness, your testimony, please. It's true what they say, that youth are hot- <laughs> Youth are hot-headed nowadays. Not that I mind it all edgy. Now then, what should I start with? The witness was on security detail at the hotel on the night of the murder. Is this correct, Miss Oldbag? It was a great job being able to see my dear Juan. It was almost too much for my little heart to handle. You mean you were a fan of the victim? Look, everyone's crazy over the for the over the end. Oh, God, crazy over that end guard, saying he's cute in a fresh way or something. But not me. I wouldn't say anything so silly. After all, I have no interest in a little child like him. I'm only interested in a real man like Juan, like Juan Decimo. I am Juandissimo! And he like, you know, he like puffs up his chest. Uh, but those two were the same age. Yeah, exactly. 
One of them just looks older. Anyways, I was saying. I was pacing in front of his room that night. Very well. Please tell the court what you witnessed that night of the murder. Leave it to me, Edgy Poo. Ew. Anyways, after the ceremony, I went, to, I went to pace around in the hallway in front of his room. There was something I was interested in finding out, you know? Well, since I was on the job, I made sure to keep a good eye out on the whole, on the whole time. That's when someone showed up. It was a man coming out of poor Juan's room. It was Ingard, Matt Ingard. He was trying to sneak, sneak his way out of Juan's room. Did she see... Did she see Matt? I'm really, I'm thinking about it right now. Did she actually see Matt, or did she see someone wearing his costume? See, it has to be him. He's the murderer. I see. Well, Mr. Wright, you may begin your cross-examination. Like, are we having a repeat of the first game? Did you see him, or did you see his costume? Give me more information on that. Someone showed up, man come out of Juan's room. You saw my client, are you sure about that? Yes, see. Really? Annoying brat, when I said I saw someone, I saw that person. Why do I get a sense of deja vu? Maybe to avoid her repeat last year, I should divulge into a bit- Yeah! 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 <laughs> Please tell the court about the man's clothes in more detail. What a troublesome man you are, really. As if something like that matters. But it does. Hmm. Now, what was it? Oh, yes, he was wearing that thing. What thing? The gaudy thing he always wearing. That, that racing jacket? Oh, he was wearing that. At the detention center, too. Okay. So he wasn't wearing his outfit. That thing's meant for nothing but seducing women out of their pantaloons. Oh, God. Hmm, right. So, Mr. Wright, what was his testimony just, uh, just now important or relevant in any way? Eh, it was not important. No, it's very important. No, shut up. Shut up, Judge. I'm doing my job. Of course it was important, Your Honor. Then perhaps you would like to point out what part of the testimony was important. Don't you see, Edgeworth? Your Honor, I request what the witness said about the jacket be at, uh, appended to her testimony. I don't quite see where you're going with this. Oh well, I don't like a bad mouth anyone else. Huh. He was wearing a flashy racing jacket, honestly. It's all for show. I'm gonna press that more. Did you see his face? Sure about that. Yes. Did you, like, actually see his face? Okay, no, it's just his jacket? Alright, cool. Cool. My bad, I didn't mean- <laughs> I didn't mean to go past that. Sorry, Maya. Mia. Alright. So let's press more on that jacket. She says she saw his jacket, but she still hasn't said she saw his face. Someone could've just been wearing, like, a- Like a, you know, mask or something. Wearing that flashy racing jacket. Are you sure the defendant was wearing a racing jacket? What do you think? It's not like I've seen him in anything other than that horrible thing. I'm sure he was wearing it. She's so sure of herself that it's, that it's to the point of self-absorption. She may not remember things or be mistaken here and there, but I don't think she's lying. It's bad for us, really bad. All right. She's straight on to a few interesting side topics this time too, hasn't she? So I guess I just start pressing stuff. Anyways, after the ceremony, I went pace around his room. Why'd you pace around his room? It's old bag. What was your post on? What was your post on that night? The lobby. I was supposed to help set up the stage for the thrift for thriftly, thriftly. Oh, thriftly show. Trifling. I don't know. But I refused to help. I'll have you know, it was for that that lead headed that lead that lead headed samurai show. Heh. <laughs> I even took out a few of the nails. What the fuck? 
You trying to get him killed? Besides, the manager with the glasses seemed to be working hard at it without me. So I thought I'd take a break and spread my wings a little. And that's when you went to hang around the victim's door? There's something I was interested in finding out. What'd you want to find out? Something you were interested in. And just what was that? It's not some little thing I can just go around telling everyone, you know? Uh, it's a murder case. Tell me. It's top secret between me and Juan. He's dead now. And, uh, Edgy Poo, of course. Mr. Edgeworth, what's this thing she was interested in? I have no idea. I despise gossip, Your Honor. Gossip? But should it be, should it prove relevant, we can always have it, uh, appeed, appeed, appended, appeaded, whatever, you know, <laughs> to her testimony. Looks like we shouldn't enforce it right now. And did the witness stay in the vicinity of the victim's door the entire time? <laughs> Hold back, please. <laughs> well, since I was on the jaws, make sure to keep a good eye out the whole time. That's a... That's a lie. Isn't that... Didn't she say she had to go to the bathroom? Oh. Then would you tell us the number of people who went... Uh, who went in and out of Mr. Juan's room? I have no idea. I wasn't born so I could count things. <clears throat> I wasn't born so I can count things for those who didn't pay attention in class. That's why ever since I turned 20, I quit keeping track of how old I really am. Oh, fuck. Yes, well... That would explain why your age was not included in the You, you serious? Oh god. Oh no. In any case, the witness then saw someone correct. Oh god. Oh man, then when someone showed up, uh, it was a man coming out of poor Juan's room. Who in the world was that? I'm not allowed to say. This sort of information has to be carefully guarded from the masses, Sonny. That, ma that man that came out of Juan's room. It was... He was... Yes, he was. Ah! Oh, I'm too scared! I can't say his name out loud. Oh. What I wouldn't give to have Francesco whip... <laughs> exactly. Well, I guess I can tell you, since he was such a bad boy anyways. Such a bad boy. The world may never know. <laughs> Wait, what? It, what? If you're gonna tell me, then... What the hell you mean? Oh. Okay, never mind. <laughs> it just goes into Matt. Alright, cool. I mean, I, I already did this, right? So my client. Sure about that? Yes. Okay, yeah, there's nothing more to do that. And I pressed the other one as well. Might as well press it again. Just, oh shit. Didn't mean to do that. I will press it again just in case it's one of those things where you have to press them all in order. Because sometimes they like to do that. It pisses me off. <laughs> just have that go. Shirts his jacket. Who's wearing it? Alright. Cool. Did I... Did we change her statement again? Or just one time? We did it two times, right? Well, since I was on the job, someone showed up. Said, Man, okay. All right. Let's see what we got here. Let's see what we really got here. Let's delve into this. At the ceremony, went to pace around the room. All right. Something I was interested in. Okay. See the job. Yeah, get out of the whole time. Someone showed up. Some man coming from poor Font's room. It was him, and he was wearing that fucking jacket. Honestly, it's all just for show. Now, let me see. It's Rebels with us. Please, that's him. Hmm. He said he was changing in his room, but if she said, if she, said she saw him, she saw him. Alright. Let's head to, uh... Good uh, the whole time. Something I was interested in finding out. All right. Just making sure. 
It's not a contradiction, but, you know, something there. Alright. First things first, before I kill myself. <laughs> hmm. Keep an eye out the whole entire time. Someone showed up. Alright. Now, he was wearing his flashy racing jacket, honestly. Was found in his Hakama. So, that would prove that, at that time, the button wouldn't be there. Huh. I'm gonna use this. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, definitely, because the times don't add up, and if he's wearing something different... There you go. Miss Oldbeck! Wait, don't say my name for no reason. Do you know what this is? It's a button, number two on the... <clears throat> it's button number two on the Jammin' Ninja's costume. Now I know she's an obsessed fan. She identified it as a single glance. Oh. Give it here, give it here! If you don't give it to me, I'll punish you with this. Wow. She really is a diehard fan, huh? This button was discovered on, on Matt's body during the full body search. See? See? This button proves beyond a shadow of a doubt it was the rascal. It was that rascal. He did it. That guy. He was caught up in the in the pleats, pleats, whatever, of of the nickel samurai hamaka pants. Hmm. See, you see? And Matt is the nickel samurai. Witness. Now, it may just be me, and I do have an active imagination, but just now, did you say that the defendant, Matt, was wearing a usual uh, uh, eh, wearing his usual racing jacket? Uh, I'm so sorry. Sorry that you judge people based on what they wear. If I wore that trendy... Oh, shit. Alright, I'm just gonna sip my water, you know? She's still going. <clears throat> Documentary on curling? What? Rat-a-tat-tat-tat. Now hold your tongue still there for a second. It's what you saw in actuality was not, was not Matt the man. But Mr. But Mr. Engard, the Nickel Samurai. But when you think about it, they really are one and the same anyways. Miss Oldbag, this is very important point we're talking about here. Ejipu, do you think so too? Well, it might be something worth considering. Just say it's important and agree with me for a change. Oh god, not again. <laughs> Witness, think carefully and try to remember as much as you can before you testify. Alright, if you insist. I should be the ones I should be the one signing, not you. Damn. Who I saw. Alright. End guard, end guard. Yes, now I remember. The nickel samurai, that's right, it was the nickel samurai that I saw. Yes, it would have been convenient for him to wear his costume during the murder. He had to go to the post-ceremony stage show right after the crime scene, you know? So he must have worn that Nickel Samurai costume when he was stabbing poor Juan. I knew it. I knew you say he was inside the costume. What? Did you think there could have been someone else inside that costume? Don't be a bad little boy thinking such rude things. But the possibility does exist. And young as today, I told you, there's no way it was anyone else. How do you know that? Because I said so. And that's why I s and what I say is the truth. At least she's just a delightful... <laughs> At least she's just a delightful witness as she was a year ago. Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. And sucked into the Capcom leaks for the last hour. Are there more? Did more come out? Are you fucking serious? On guard, now I remember. The Nickel Samurai, that's right. It was it. Well, first, let's just press. Oh, no, you're just rereading it? Okay. Because I, I remember they... Don't think. <laughs> Don't think, anyways. <clears throat> Alright. Cool. <laughs> Watch your language, young man. Sort of tone... 
Uh, what sort of a tone is that to take with your elder? My youthfulness isn't what used to be, so you should forgive me for everything. If you keep on barking at me like that, I'll start singing at the top of my lungs. What? A striking figure by the sea, standing all alone. He is, th he's the nickel samurai. She's actually singing. Somebody help my poor ears. Mr. Edgeworth, can you please do something about the racket? Witness, I'll give you a piece of gum later if you'll be good. <laughs> he said, Kieras Chicle? <laughs> Want some gum? Right. I've been, I've been sending the bill for chewing gum. Oh, really? Come on. Come on, man. Edgeworth, you have way more money than me, even though you lose all the time. Damn it. <laughs> sending me the bill. How dare you? All right. Yeah, but I remember that the, uh, that for the Capcom leaks, that they, the group still has, like, a huge percentage of more. Now, I'm not sure, I'm, I'm pretty sure most of it is, like, you know, personal information and stuff, but still. But a little more careful with your, uh, be a little more careful with your testimony, please. Not too long ago, you said that he was wearing a racing jacket, and now he's not? Not too long ago. Then let me ask you this. When were, uh, when were your... When you were itty bitty, what was your grand dream? Huh? What did you want to be when you grew up, Whippersnapper? My dream? Well, I uh, wanted to be a judge. Uh, judge Wack Wagner. I wanted to be Judge Wagner, hero of the public court. So what? See? And look at where you are now. You're not a Judge Wagner. You're you, aren't you? Well, what I said earlier. Who puts any weight into things like that? The court does. And the now is everything. I can't be held responsible for the past. Excuse me? Edgeworth has a motherfucking government job. Oh yeah, you're right. <laughs> All the matters... Huh. Huh. I forgot. Wait, attorneys are... Defense attorneys are self-employed, right? <laughs> Unless you work for, like, a firm. But, like... <laughs> but to be a prosecutor, that's a government job. That may... Uh, how does that work? <laughs> All that matters is the man w was inside the costume. Uh, is that enough? Uh, I have... I have my notifications on? <laughs> Oops. <laughs> I usually turn that off. Let's do that now. Uh, uh, wrong buttons. Damn it. Don't look. Don't look. Stop looking. What's wrong with you? Don't look. Look away. Don't look behind the curtain. Yes. It would have been convenient for him to wear the costume during the murder. And why would that be? That was, uh, that way no one could see his face, of course. But there's still no advantage for him that I can see. In fact, you would think the costume would make him stand out of... Cut the feet. <laughs> Cut the feet! Don't look! <laughs> In fact, you would think the costume would make him stand out all the more. You're such an annoying child, you know that? You disagree with everything I say. Isn't that what you're always doing to me? I got it. Maybe it was more troublesome for him to change in and out of his costume. He had to go to the post-ceremony show. Okay. Was there anyone else scheduled to appear at the pro-ceremony show? Well, all the contestants were supposed to go on stage in a friendly gesture thing. And that included the Jammin' Ninja. Of course, it included him. That's when, uh, that's why Mr. On Guard came out, came out of dear Juan's room. I didn't give it a second thought. Hmm, I see. Well, anyways? So he must have worn that nickel samurai costume when he was stabbing poor Juan. So, let me ask you one last time. The person you saw is really was the Nickel Samurai. As showy as ever. Haven't I been saying that from the very beginning? Can I throw it in the towel yet? Hmm. No need to think too hard on this one, huh? There's a contradiction in her testimony and it's sitting in plain sight. The question is what what's the contradiction means for us? Well, I have fig well, I had to figure out what you're talking about first, but okay. <laughs> He's like, sure, whatever. 
Let's see. Nickel Samurai. That's right. It was Nickel Samurai. I saw him. I believe that. Would have been convenient for him to wear his costume during the murder. No, it wouldn't have. He had to go to the post-ceremony stage show right after the crime, you know? Uh-huh. Yeah, that's true. So, he must have worn that Nickel Samurai costume when he was stabbing Port Juan. Okay, whatever. I'm just gonna... It might not work. Right. Oh, my bad. I skipped over it. <laughs> Would have been convenient for him to wear it. It might not work, but I'm pretty sure coming out covered in blood is stupid. Okay, cool. Yeah, we can just... We can just... We can just pretend that didn't happen. We can just pretend that didn't happen. <laughs> the whole background story is Phoenix became a lawyer during a broke system. So obviously... <laughs> Cases that are set up for a guilty verdict and stuff. Oh my god, there's no joke. Oh, wow. <laughs> Jesus. It sucks. Being a lawyer used to mean you had money. Now I'm broke. Alright, must wear the nickel samurai suit. Oh shit, I didn't mean, I didn't mean to do that, my bad. Alright, hold up. What do we have? What do we actually have with us right now? Samurai suit. It's clockwork hand. Seems like uh, confess something at the show. Kidnapper. Blah blah. Gatewater Hotel. Map. The room's right there. That's hotel in the lobby. Okay. There's some water on it. That's not important yet. That's not important. Mr. Juan. That's Juan Decimal. That's my guy. Uh. been convenient for him to wear the suit during the murder. Oh yeah? Would it have been convenient for him when he was stabbing him? But he wasn't stabbing him. He was choking him. Where? Where's the thing? Really? Did I? Hold up. First of all, did I even use the right piece of evidence? Yeah, okay. I did. <laughs> huh. Damn it! <laughs> Must have worn that next time. He was stabbing poor Juan. He had to go to the post ceremony. Hold up. I don't think there's any like. I'm just gonna check it out. Okay, just making sure. Just making sure for that one. That one I had zero faith in. It's whatever. All right. I'm like I'm like losing steam here. This is what's happening. My brain is smoking. It's on fire right now. I remember now. Nickel Samurai. Uh, that's right. It was Nickel Samurai that I saw. Would have been convenient for him to wear his costume during the murder. I don't believe that. He had to go to the to that post ceremony stage show right after the crime, you know. Now, here's the thing. Is this another one of those fucking key room situation things, right? Key room. You know the fucking the black key that we had where the evidence that we need isn't um isn't saying it because Matt has no knowledge of the post show. He didn't know anything about that. So is that something that that we can use on one of those statements? Is that something that that they have like a little hidden detail that they don't want me to fucking know? Would have been convenient for him. Let me just try Using using him on both of these statements. Okay. So that has nothing to do with anything. Alright, cool. Has nothing to do with anything right now. What the hell? So what has Wait a minute? Is 
is there something in her testimony that um so I steal samurai costume that good thing blah blah so he must have worn that next time okay, when he said okay never mind because there's already a big fucking loophole where it's like she's like I saw everyone who was there but Lada was there the whole time so but damn I I really don't know actually Would it, would it be the button again? <laughs> I don't think it would be. Oh, shit. I didn't mean to press it. Damn it. Huh. I'm really... Why am I fucking... Why am I having a hard time with this? been convenient for him to wear the costume during the murder. That's such a that's such an obvious lie. I don't I don't think so. Do I have to use the fucking photo to show her that he was strangled? <laughs> Nothing convenient happening with that costume. Yeah, I know. It's just that I. Is it the fucking button again? I'll be mad if it's the button again. I mean, because the button would. The button could prove that, hey man, if you're gonna stab somebody and get covered in blood. Is it his fucking photo? Alright. Like... Like, I'm focusing on that statement because it's super not convenient for multiple reasons. First of all, it's a bright fucking costume. Second of all... Uh... Second of all, he doesn't even know about the, the show happening. But it's just, what, what the hell do I use for that? There's some water on it, top of the lid. There's fingerprints. Juan's murder. Do I gotta use this fucking murder photo? Like, I'm trying- In my mind, in my mind, I'm trying to prove that- That the crime scene is too messy for someone to go in there wearing their full costume. That's just pure white. But I just don't- I don't know how to prove it. <laughs> that's- that's the- thought process I'm going with right now. But I just don't. Like, I'm at a point where I'm just trying everything with everything, because I really don't even know how to fucking... And I just refuse. I'm just too stubborn to look at the guide, even though I have it right next to me. If I wanted to glance at it. Yeah, it looks interesting, but it's not convenient. Like, that that's the obvious fucking lie right there. I just... I just don't know how to prove it. <laughs> I just don't know how to prove it. Is it the tomato juice? Is it the tomato juice? Delicious tomatoes? I was on bad terms. It's rivals. What the fuck? What didn't I use? Alright, hold up. I use that. Transceiver's not gonna do shit. That's not gonna do nothing. Tablet won't do shit. Hotel. We have to walk through the hall and stuff. Could you give me a hint? Yeah, sure. At this point, I'll take the hint. Is it the water? Is it the water on the, on the guitar case? Is it the water? 
You spill ink water over that? That Dasani spilled all over the floor? The knife? The knife? I used the knife! I guess I used it on the wrong statement then. Why use the knife? You all saw me use the knife. Think fingerprints. What? You mean the fact that it's covered? <laughs> that his hands are super covered? While wearing that costume? My problem here is that I used the knife on that statement, though. So then, that's not the right statement. <laughs> yeah, that's not the right statement, then. Is it the stabbing statement? Is it the stabby-stab statement? Is that what we're doing? <laughs> oh shit, I didn't mean to go past it. Damn it. I was just pressing buttons, I didn't mean to go past it, I'm sorry. Go to a post ceremony stage show right after the crime. I love how. Okay. Last time, I wouldn't blame the game. This time, I am going to blame the game. Because instead of using this for evidence, I couldn't use the fucking autopsy report where it literally spells out, Hey, he was strangled. Really? Really? I have to use the knife on that. Video game. What the hell? What the hell? That one's not my fault. I had it. That one's not my fault. Please take a look at this. Yeah, so it's a knife. Big deal. Like, I know what you mean, right? But if they were gonna do that, then put me on the fucking... Then put, then put it on a different statement. <laughs> put it on the other statement. Where you go like, yeah, it would be convenient for him if his fingerprints weren't on it, right? But you have an autopsy report that says, yeah, he died because he was strangled. If you're trying to scare me with that, I have you know it won't work. But no, that's not my intentions at all. The knife that was used in the murder, correct? Your Honor, do you know why this piece of evidence is important to the case? You don't even have to ask. It's because the defendant's fingerprints are on it. Is that what you're driving at? That's exactly what I'm driving at. Where are you driving at? And whose car we're driving? Mr. Ed, uh, Mr. On Guard was really in the Nickel Samurai costume at the time of the murder? Then it's impossible for his fingerprints to have been left on this knife. Actually, he would have wiped all previous fingerprints on the knife right off. Oh, that's right. The Nickel Samurai wears gloves, doesn't he? He probably took his gloves off before he began the stabbing. Why would you do that? And why would he do something like that? To leave his prints on the murder weapon? Is there no way he could do something like that? However, this is one possibility. Then let's hear your possibility. It's very simple. The defendant went to the victim's room while in costume as the Nickel Samurai. You know what? That part, that part where we sat there for like a good minute, that's getting cut from the YouTube version. We're not sitting there. <laughs> At that time, the defendant held no intent to murder. He was probably just going to relax and take and talk with the victim about the, st about the stage show. Which is why he took his gloves off. Hmm. I won't tell. <laughs> I won't tell if you won't. But the murder still did take place. It's well known that there was bad blood between the victim and the defendant. I read that backwards. <laughs> yes, I have heard that before. Well, Mr. Wright, what do you have to say about Mr. Edgeworth's theory? So, let me get this straight. Edgeworth's theory goes like this. 
when the defendant went to the victim's room, he had no intention of killing him. Now, up to this point, uh, are there any problems with this theory? There's no problems with this theory. There's contradiction. Hmm. There's no problems. There are no problems with this. I think about it one more time. There's no problems with this theory. Uh, I can't see any real problems with that theory. But if you let Edgeworth theory stand, then we're on a very large step closer to guilty verdict. Look at the court's record and, and take another shot at it. Well, he said at this point in time, I thought there was more I can look into. Mia. Damn. <laughs> so, let me get this straight. Ezra, okay, hold up. Come on. There's a contradiction. <clears throat> the theory contradicts something in earlier testimony. What are you blabbing about? Now, for argument's sake, let's say, suppose Mr. Engar was the killer. If that's the case, I think it's impossible for the killer to have gone to the victim's room without intent. Because he brought the knife! This knife. This was used by Miss Ungard at the dinner. Miss. Mister. Yes, we did establish that. Which means that if my client was in fact the killer, then he bought this knife with him when he went to visit Mr. Mr. Juan. Juantissimo. I see. However, you just said it yourself. At that time, the defendant held no intent to murder. If that were true, then why would he bring the knife? He wouldn't, would he? Hmm? Which means, Mr. Edgeworth, your theory is flawed from the, uh, theory is flawed from the suppo su supposition? What? <clears throat> your theory was flawed from supposition what? Okay, whatever. I forget it. I'm not even gonna, I'm not even gonna try. I'm gonna take an L on that word. And one more thing. If the murderer was wearing the costume, the murder? If the murderer was wearing the costume at the time of the murder, then this should be then this should be glove marks on the knife. Which means the defendant's fingerprints shouldn't be all over like a bee like bees on a hive. Oh god. And that brings me to my final point. This knife was planted by the real killer to hide their identity and mislead us. Order. Order I say. Order in the court. Was the knife really planted by the killer? Why would the murderer do such a thing? To hide the murder method. To frame Matt Ungard. It's to frame my client, of course. To frame? Aren't you forcing the interpretation just a little too hard on this one? But we just established that the witness saw the Nickel Samurai in costume. And if that were true, then there shouldn't be a single fingerprint on this knife. Oh shit. Witness! Looks like I've made your life a teeny bit more difficult, huh, Ejipu? Witness, did you or did not, did you or did you not really see the Nickel Samurai? Well, I guess at first I might have forgotten, but... Are you saying you mixed up Mr. Ungar with the Nickel Samurai, his character on TV? But I mean, I can't really do anything about that now. Look, I was waiting around in front of the doors because, well... Well, I wasn't waiting around for the Nickel Samurai, that's for sure. She wasn't waiting for the Nickel Samurai. Alright then, who were you waiting for? Hmm, that's top secret to anyone outside of security. I have a feeling that you were waiting for Mr. Juan, am I correct? The way you think, you're a sad amateur with a terrible case of nearsightedness. Amateur? Me? What am I an amateur of? So, old bags, just waiting around in front of the victim's room. But it doesn't sound like she was waiting to catch a glimpse of, of Mr. Juan. Mr. Juan Decimo. Maybe, Phoenix, maybe the old bags was waiting around for that person. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Old bags, you were waiting around for Adrian. Who's this person? This is Adrian Andrews, Mr. Mr. Matt's, Matt's, Mr. Matt's manager. But why would the defendant manager be in the victim's room? It was that this is the la it seems that this is the latest rumor in circulation, Your Honor. Oh, this is, well, this is, hmm, hmm, yes, hmm, yes, I see. The judge seems to be really into the article. If that's been called, <laughs> if it can be called such a thing. 
And this manager, with the initials AA, are you saying it's Adrian Andrews? Without a doubt, the witness thought so as well. Hmm. Looks like you found me out. Well, that's fine. I can throw away the whole sworn to confidentiality stuff then. Witness. What in the world are you? Watch out, Phoenix. I got a bad feeling about this. Very bad feeling. I got some information. Some very secret information from a certain source. So that's why I was doing... <clears throat> so that's why I was doing my own little investigation in secret, of course. But what for? Ah, uh, just for myself. Personal reasons and all that. Well, Mr. Edgeworth, how will you proceed from here? I really don't want to do this. However, I cannot simply let this point slide. I see. Very well then. Witness, please testify about this secret information. Get ready. This is going to take the wind out of all you youngins. I'm sure we're all capable of handling this, really. It's not like we're ten years old. Okay. He's an evil, evil man. He thought he could ruin my poor Juan by causing huge scandal. So to do that, he set his own manager to get in close with him. I cannot condone such dirty tricks, so I took action. Oh, and this is top secret, but you got that? Nobody else but you... <laughs> Nobody else but you and me know, yeah? Okay. Except for the bailiff and the public and everyone else. The defendant sent, sent his manager. What a detestable topic for the court. Wait, nobody's above gossip. And isn't, and isn't there a saying, the truth is never pleasant? Yeah, that's true. I've heard that one before. Mr. Edgeworth, what about the Adrian Andrews person? We have looked into this matter and found that the truth that the article possesses is in fact baseless gossip. Hmm. But should this be true, then this proves that the defendant did bear ill will towards the victim. So this means I have to smash this rumor once and for all. Now then, Mr. Edgeworth, you may cross-examine the witness. Be careful, old bag seems rather excited right now. That's right, on guard is nothing but your average fouled, bloody youth. Well, as the old saying goes, you gotta burn old bags with fire. Time to fire up the afterburners and hit the highway to the danger zone. What kind of fucking saying is that, Phoenix? Alright. Gotta stomp this rumor. Damn. Thought he could ruin his by, by causing a huge scandal to do that. Since his own manager, I cannot condone such dirty tricks on oh, this top secret. Okay. I'm gonna press this one. I don't have any proof that Mr. Ongard did such a thing. You must be suffering from shock, the shock of hearing the truth. And now, since you're in much shock, you can do that. Do that? Well, okay. You're right. I can't do anything about it. But boy, do I wish I could do something about you. Alright then, Sonny, show me what you got. Can you show me proof that Ongard didn't bear any ill will towards Juan? Confess something after the post then, right? Maybe. Maybe that could be his confession, you know? Photo of Juan's murder scene. His rivals. Was on bad terms. I mean, sure, why not? I'm not gonna let you push me around so easily. Heh, <laughs> there's many, many of men who've said those exact words and paid dearly for them. That does not sound pleasant. Brace yourself for this. Here's my proof that Mr. Angard did not hold any ill will towards the victim. Yeah, I highly doubt it. Yeah. I highly doubt that. That's gonna give me my guilty verdict. Alright. Let me actually review this. There's Andrew fingerprints. Put a Juan. Hot star.
I don't... Do I have proof for that? <laughs> Do I actually have proof for that? He thought he could ruin poor Juan by causing a huge scandal. Send as a manager to get across with. I don't. I don't. I honestly don't think I have proof of that. Prove that it didn't hold a grudge. It's gonna confess something. Kidnapper. Tabloids. Pretty sure the tabloid has nothing to do with that. Photo of the murder scene. And yeah, none of that. Yeah, I don't. I don't, I don't think I have any evidence for that. Unless I can just do that somehow. <laughs> yeah. I actually don't think I have evidence for that. Thought he could ruin poor Juan by causing a huge scandal. Let me see. The scandal? What do you mean by that? You're dim witted one, aren't you? Can't believe you don't know what the scandal is. Honestly, what are they teaching kids in middle school these days? No, I wasn't <clears throat> I wasn't asking what the word scandal means. Even I know that much. Well, and Angar thought he could only you know a monopoly by popularity. I mean What it I'm sorry. First of all, I want to see what happens if I just decline offer. I don't have anything to offer. See? Just as I thought. You were lecturing me, saying anything. Okay. Give me a free pass, say whatever I want, whenever I want, silly boy. Hey, my big mouth. That's the way the cookie crumbles for you, anyways. I mean, I can use the... <clears throat> my bad. I can use the... If, if they do go down this logic, I can use the photo to be like, hey... He won the fucking... He won the Grand Prix. So he... There's no reason for him to have ill will. Right? I can go down that road of logic, but... That's the only thing I can really think about with that. I don't think there's any anything else that I can use for that. Oh, didn't mean to press that. Yeah, okay, so they, they won't go down that road of logic. Alright, cool. Alright. But it can ruin NJ. You've done some shitty tricks, so I took action. You took action. What the hell do you mean you took action? So what do you mean by took action? Like I already told you, I was lying in wait for those crime scenes. Once the slimy woman came out of Juan's room, I was going to capture her and teach her a good lesson. Something you need. You are going to teach her a good lesson? I was going to make her eat the damaged beams of my gray gun. Take that. No, stop! My weakness! Well, it was too bad that woman didn't come through the door that night. Hmm. Oh, and this is no top secret. Nobody else but you and me know, okay? I'm just going to press that. Just for, just for the fuck of it. Wait. What? When busy woman, teen time with the kids is over. Super information no one else knows yet. If that's true, how do you know the secret information? Huh? Well, that's because I'm a pro. Yes, that's it. it. It's a secret. Even if you drill a hole into my brain, you'll never find out. How in the world did Bat get such a secret piece of information?
Ju <laughs> just got scared by a ray gun. <laughs> pew pew. I think I know. I should press further. Eh, there's no harm in pressing further. But I think I know. I'm pretty sure she probably found the camera with the article inside of it. If you don't have a good girl to tell me- wait, if you don't have- If you don't be a good girl and tell me where you got the secret information, you won't get to go home today. Mmm. Ejipu, what are you doing? Help me! What do I have to do with this? Just do it for me. You'll get your reward. Ugh. Mm, I don't want your reward, but you don't leave me much of a choice. The witness could have gotten her information from anywhere. It's even possible that it was spontaneously made up inside the witness's head. And he lectures me on reckless blabbering. As long as we don't know where the witness came, where the information came from, it's quite a waste of time to focus on that line of questioning. Yeah, no. Yeah, no. She got it from the... She got it from the fucking... <laughs> she got it from the goddamn camera. She found it. She stole it. There's no way. There's no way that she just... You know. What are you looking at me for that? <laughs> what are you looking at me like that? Stop it. Witness? I hate to say it, but this is how you came across to acquire your secret info, isn't it? The investigative, the investigative photographer Lotta Hart. Oh yes, I remember that mischievous girl. How dare you call her mischievous? She's a beautiful, independent woman. She reported that she had lost a certain note she had written to herself. She reported such a thing? Oh, on the piece of paper on the piece of paper that had written down some of her out out what? <laughs> out rock a rock I don't I don't even fucking know what that word is, I'm not even gonna try. <laughs> About the relationship between the victim and Miss Andrews. What? what? Outrageous idea, you say? No no no. I am I said impressions. Then 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 everything written on this piece of paper is completely meaningless? Aha! That's it. That's the note. Nah. Nah, shit. No, you see? This is something completely different. This is my top secret list of groceries to buy. Hmm. Then are you the one who took Miss Hart's note? I'm a huge fan of Juan, that, that's why. The, the infamous puffy-haired whippersnapper. She's working with the evil Ingrid. She said, to, she said so herself. Ingrid, I'm a psychic. She was so happy smiling like a little silly duck. I was only checking what you had written. Edgy Poo, you believe me, don't you? D what? I was only trying to help out like the angel I am. I only It's only one little piece of paper. I've never taken anything else before. You really should come with a supply of cheese to match your vintage wine. Well, it was only a piece of paper. I suppose we can overlook this just once. Look like she's really sorry. Should I forgive her? Pile more on the pressure. It wasn't just a paper. It was also a $1,600 camera. If I let up on her now, she'll get away. I have to find some way to inflict a deafening blow to this prop uh, uh, prosecution. Witness? He said that the only thing you stole was the note. Is that correct? S stole? Why did you listen more carefully? You're annoying. I saved this piece of paper from the terrible lonely trash can, that's all. You're lying, damn it, and I can prove it. Oh, here comes Phoenix with the damn it. Are you putting my credibility under scrutiny again? You're damn right, Miss Oldbag. I don't believe that the note is the only thing that you stole that night. There's a camera in there. Miss Oldbag, that note was with the camera inside its case, wasn't it? A camera? Yesterday, Lotta Hart was raising a huge stank over her camera. She kept saying something like, My sweetie six, uh, six, 1600 camera disappeared on me. Why? Why witness? What's, what is it, Gramps? If you have that note, then it's only logical that you have the camera too. Oh, uh, looks like you found me out again, Sonny. And is this is the camera you're looking for? 
Yep, that's it. What? Even though I look like this, I'm still a person, you know? I'm still eat meals like you. I fall in love and borrow things from people. Um, I think you def your definition of borrow is a little off. I saw that woman's business card, and that's when I noticed it said, Slime Bag Celebrity Photographer Extraordinaire. Well, when I saw that, I had to know the sort of pictures she had taken. I'm a professional security guard. It's my business to know things like that. Bailiff, check this camera photos. Hurry. You must examine them at once. And then there's just a bunch of, like, sexy pinup photos of Lada. She's like, it's for Instagram. And we're like, oh my. Well, Mr. Edgeworth, what do we have? There's only one photo that seems to be relevant to this case. The rest are just very erotic. Please present this to the court. All right, Sephiroth, look at him. This is, oh, oh my God, it's just another. Looks like someone's too short for the outfit. Looks like somebody's super short under there. This is the Nickel Samurai. See, I told you that the guy, that's the guy I saw. This proves that the witness was not lying earlier about this matter. Steel Samurai Part 2. What does this all mean, Mr. Edgeworth? This photo by itself does not prove that the person is, uh, and it's, and, uh, and is the defendant, however. In his own confession, Mr. Ungar clearly states that at the time of the murder, he was still in his, uh, he was still in his nickel, 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 still in his nickel samurai costume. If that's the case, then this nickel samurai is, he's a phony, he's a fake, the defendant. Damn it. How did it come to this? I think this brings us to the end. We have examined every piece of evidence thoroughly. Final comments, Mr. Wright? The courts will consider them before we close. Do you agree that this photo is decisive evidence against your client? Fuck no. Of course I don't. If this photo really is decisive evidence, then we're done for. But if I raise an objection here and blow it, then I'll put Maya's life in jeopardy. I can't make a mistake here. There's only one road out of this mess. This photo that Lada took? There's... Something strange with it. There's something strange with this photo. I knew this was coming, right? Your thoughts, Mr. Edgeworth? I think we can all agree there's nothing strange with this photo. I think we can all agree that if Edgeworth had a voice, his voice actor would be fucking, uh... What's his name? Oh, what's his name? I cannot remember his name. Damn it. The guy who does, like, Akihiko from Persona 3. Oh, what is his name? It's like Sean something. The same guy who does like Gara from Naruto. <laughs> There's no way that the defendant did the body. <laughs> I, I gotta fuck. I gotta look up his name. It's gonna bother me. It's gonna bother me. It's gonna bother me. I'm looking it up right now. <laughs> Liam O'Brien. Why did I say Sean? Why did I, I'm thinking of someone else. But Liam O'Brien, he would he would definitely be the voice actor for Edgeworth, 100%. English voice actor. It would be great. Did they do a dub for the for the uh for the Ace Attorney anime? Because I haven't watched that. But I feel like he would do. I feel like he, Liam O'Brien would be great for fucking for Miles Edgeworth. Uh, there's no way. There's no way that the defendant has debunked this photo, even with the bunker bust. Debunk with a bunker bust? Is that what you're planning to do, Mr. Wright? Kind of. Maybe. Anyways, please look at this photo one more time. Yeah, they did do a dub. Oh man. I just- I just want, like, Edgeworth with, like, the subtle- Like, that subtle, kind of, like, quiet voice. Still need to watch the anime. Okay. I really think Liam O'Brien would do such a great job. If, uh, if you really, if you really believe you can honestly find something wrong with this photo, then you should only need one chance, correct? <sighs> God damn it. I have to find something wrong with the photo. Where the heck did she take the photo from anyway? 
It's all out of focus. I can't actually take a good shot, especially when it counts. Now then, let's hear your objection. What about this photo is strange? I'll tell you about the photo is strange. These little legs he got. Little tiny little legs. I would like to direct the court's attention to this one area right here. What are you pointing to? His ankles? That's right, Your Honor. It seems that they are broken. I have broken his ankles. <laughs> that was a stupid joke. If you, <laughs> I can't believe I did that. If you could see this person's ankles, it would be one thing. However, you cannot. And what does this mean? The costume, per the cost, uh, the costume person in this photo could not have been Mr. Engard. Impression of Edward. Really like. Really. I'll check that out. What is the meaning of this? I wonder if you could. I wonder if you would care to elaborate. With actual facts, that is. Let's take a good. Let's take a look at Nickel Samurai's poster. Please pay particular attention to the area around the bottom of the hamaka. His his socks. You can see his socks. Exactly. However, in this photo, the Nickel Samurai is clearly holding his hamaka up just by walking. There's only one explanation for this. The person inside the costume is clearly much shorter than the defendant. Stupid but kind of funny pun. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Look at his ankles. They're broken. <laughs> Alright. I think I've turned things around for myself this time. That's curious. Huh? What is... Edgeworth is unusually calm today. Because he's used to losing. He just He's just letting the trial run itself as if he's only along for the ride. Along for the ride? What do you mean by that? You can only guess that perhaps he doesn't feel under attack at all. He doesn't feel under attack? Then I haven't damaged his case at all? Mr. Edwards, where does this leave us? If the person in the photo is not Matt on guard, then everything the prosecution has tied to prove has become meaningless. Tied to prove? Tried. Hmm. I figured it would come to this. What? Nani? Right. I have something I want to ask you. I think you have proven that this person inside the costume is not Matt Ungard. In that case, who is the... who is in this photo? Uh... I don't... I don't believe it. But I... But it's the only thing that I have. Don't stress over this, Phoenix. It's very simple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, why is he so calm? Alright, let's hear your thoughts. Who's the person? Uh-huh. Uh, uh, <laughs> For some reason, I can't say her name again. What is wrong with me? Why do I blink on that name? Damn it. Fucking, uh, Adrian. Damn it. Ugh. It just won't come out instantly. Adrian Andrews. If you want to know who that nickel samurai is, it's none other than this woman. This woman. She's so beautiful. And why would you say it must be Miss Andrews when the world points you to her? For starters, she's short. And she can freely move in, in and out of Mr. Engard's room. Finally, she had dinner with Mr. Engard that night. And how does this all add up? It means that it makes it very easy for her to get to a certain item. A certain knife with Mr. Engard's fingerprints all over it. The knife that was used for the murder weapon. Why don't you just say what you want to say, right? I have to do this now. This is my last chance to turn things around. The defense moves. The defense moves to ind indict. Uh, to indict Miss. The fuck! I can't read. To indict Miss Adrian Andrews in the murder of Juan Cordia. It was Miss Andrews who tried to frame the defendant for the crime. Order! Order! Order in my court! It looks like the trial has hit a most unexpected development. Mr. Edgeworth. Yes, Your Honor. This court has issued a, a sip, a sup, a sipinia, a sipinod, or whatever the fuck. I can't say the word. That one I know the word, I just can't say it. My mouth won't do it. For Miss Adrian Andrews. A verdict cannot be passed without first hearing her testimony. Alright. 
This is it. This is kind of bad for us. Huh? What do you mean? If and if uh, damn it, damn it. Is a, if Adrian Andrews is summoned to the court as a witness, eh? It means that the trial will go on for another day. Yeah, but <sighs> what we're not looking for is for the trial to end. We're looking for an acquittal. Just, just put the trial on her. If I don't get a verdict today, then Maya. Now then, we shall set Miss Andrews' testimony for tomorrow. What am I supposed to do? Is this about to adjourn the court? Wait and see. I'm trying to. Now then. Please, Your Honor. Continue the trial. We must pass a verdict today. Can't do that, Star Fox. Can't let you do that, Star Fox. I abhor wasting such valuable time. E Edgeworth? Your Honor, I request that you please continue with today's trial. But, but... We cannot continue due to this unexpected development. <laughs> unexpected development? I think you underestimate me, Your Honor. And what do you mean by that? That Mr. Phoenix Wright would slave, would slave his way to the Sepanina... Happening according to the plan, even if Mr. Wright was a bit slow to catch on. What? <sighs> what? What's the meaning of this? What's the meaning of your statement, Mr. Edgeworth? As, as uh, why can't I? The name skips me every time I see it. It's because the name isn't isn't spelled the way it's pronounced. <laughs> Adrian, damn it. Miss Adrian Andrews is currently waiting in the prosecution lobby. She's the next witness. Everything. Everything was planned out and advanced by that man. He's like, that's right. That's why I shot Von Karma. But I didn't shoot Tupac, though. That wasn't me. I didn't do that. Looks like the battle's far from over. Exactly. How would you spell Adrian? Put a Y in it, damn it. <laughs> Put a Y in it, make it easier. Because when I look at it, it feels like I'm just going to say Adrian. But when, when we call... We will call the witness. However, before we proceed, we shall take a 10 minute recess. Please prepare your witness in that time, Mr. Edgeworth. Well, well, well. Hey, Ronnie. Fucking, how's it going? The court will now take 10 minutes recess. Alright, so. This, right here. <laughs> right here, right now. Within our reset, I'm the judge now. Alright. I appreciate you showing up, Ronnie. But there's something I must say right now that's very important. As of right now, as of right now, I do have to end the stream. But, since I really don't want to end the stream in the middle of the, um, in the middle of... Of the, of the trial, because we're trying to get the verdict today. What I'm going to do is, because I'm on the fucking East Coast here, is around, let's say around 11 in the afternoon, like uh, Eastern time, that would be, um, what would that be in, in Pacific time? That's like three, that's three hours earlier. But, so basically in like, uh, let me do the math real quick. Basically, in about like four hours, I'll probably come back so we can finish this trial, because I know I'll have like about about like three hours. It would be eight, right? Yeah, it would be eight, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah, no, I think it is. So right now, I am gonna have to end this stream because things are gonna start getting noisy. <laughs> in my in my area in like an hour so <laughs> so this is where it's gonna have to end four hours from now no it's it's three hours oh wait four hours four hours from now yes yeah no that's four hours from now 
Yeah, that is four hours from now. I thought I thought you meant like I thought you meant like for uh the time differences. Um So that's gonna that's how this is gonna play out. Cause this stream already went longer than it was supposed to, and I'm gonna have to edit this down and render time for this is gonna make me cry. But let me just double save, because I'm used to doing that. I'm a paranoid person. My controller's not working. Hello. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Come on, stop, stop your talking, Max, Matt, whatever the fuck your name is. There we go. All right. So right now, right now, we're gonna end things here. We're gonna come back in like four hours. Hopefully, finish the trial. And then, if I can stream later on tonight, because things are still... I still gotta work out a schedule with the new job and stuff like that. So if things work out, um... I'll be honest, I don't know what the hell I'm gonna stream tonight. Either... Either we'll go back to Arkham Origins. I still have to, like, play up to the part where I last left off at on the Steam version. Or... Or I'll just pull out something different, completely new and different. Something we didn't play before, because there's some, there's some plans I have that I would like to look at. So, <clears throat> as I'm slowly losing my voice here, I pass out. But hopefully, you catch next stream. Oh no, I believe it. I, I'm surprised I didn't pass out. I'm probably gonna pass out and wait for you know wait for eleven to roll around. Eleven, eleven, yeah, eleven for Eastern time. All right, so. I'd like to thank everyone who came to watch the stream live. Helps out a lot. We are very close to becoming affiliated. But that's not the important thing. But, you know, that'll be cool, right? So I can have like I can have little emotes. That'll be nice. Um Yeah. I, I don't I don't think there's anything else I need to say. Uh as of for the other streams and stuff, those are gonna be going up on YouTube not all of them today but some of them so I'm gonna I'm gonna get those up as fast as I can like for example I know part two of Quartz Party will probably go up and same thing with um <laughs> good night from the west coast yeah the west coast the land of of the surfer dude I don't know I was gonna say something I don't know I don't know what I was gonna say but that's the plan right now West Coast game. Oh, you're both in the West Coast. Yeah. Damn. All we got here in the East Coast is is rat city rats and garbage and delicious pizza. But that's gonna be it. As always, I'd like to thank everybody for watching. And I will see you in the next video. Stay happy, stay healthy, and take care. <laughs>